Welcome to the regular Planning Commission meeting for the City of San Juan Bautista. Tonight's February 2nd, 2016. Um, if you'll stand with me, we'll pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Secretary, we have a roll call, please. Sandy Guevara? Here. Eric Renshaw? Here. David Medeiros? Here. Curtis Franco? Here. Thank you. I might add at this point that we did have five members, but uh, Commissioner Pat Garrett turned in his resignation. It was accepted by the City Council, and they're now recruitment for Commissioner. Okay, tonight we have a guest speaker. I'd like to introduce Supervisor Anthony Botello. Uh, Supervisor Botello is uh, Supervisor for District 2 and represents us in our district. And I've asked, invited him to come in and talk about some things that are happening between the county and the city and the planning function, as well as the major projects up the road. Supervisor. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Honorable Commissioners. Uh, I want to thank you for the invitation this evening. And uh, you know, being a former planning commissioner myself uh, for the county in the late 90s, I understand the challenges of, of your job. And information uh, is the tool that you need to make good, sound decisions. Uh, one of the things that, uh, before I get into introducing our new resource management agency director, uh, I just wanted to, you know, thank the city of San Juan Batista. We've had, a, uh, since I've been on board being the county supervisor, a great working relationship. Uh, we have partnered on several projects here in the city and uh, to, for the benefit of all our citizens. And, you know, without a mutual uh, working relationship, those things don't happen. And uh, I don't know if there's ever been a time uh, that the county and the city of San Juan Batista have worked closer together. Um, we've had some big changes in the county just recently. We've had a reorganization, um, trying to uh, be a little bit more efficient with you know, the resources that we have. And uh, one of those changes was the reorganization of the uh, planning department and public works and, and under the, uh, the resource management agency and we hired a, a gentleman who's here tonight I want to introduce uh, Brent Barnes uh, he's the director and he ha wears a number of other hats as well uh, I think he's in charge of integrated waste parks recreation and I'm not sure what else you do Thank you. but uh, it, we don't underpay him that's for sure he, 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 I, I, we don't overpay him. That's, that's what I meant to say. He, he has a lot of challenges, and I think he's doing a great job, and uh, he certainly wanted to attend tonight's meeting in case there's some questions that uh, um, I'm not familiar with. And, and so uh, he'll be stepping up with me if, if he doesn't mind. And uh, a big project that was just approved, not too long ago was Dell Webb. We're all familiar with that project. I think that's going to be a great benefit for the county as well as the city of San Juan Batista. And I know the commission is concerned and would like some information about the uh, uh, white wave project or natural selections, uh, uh, which is more familiar for some other folks. So uh, with that, I know you have a heavy agenda. and. Uh, I certainly want to answer your questions, or, or uh, Mr. Barnes is, uh, would like to as well. Uh, Looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, Anthony, just to start off, uh, a lot of questions came up to me about the rerouting of the San Justo and how that's going to affect the, uh, the traffic and uh, coming into San Juan as well. And yeah. As, as you're well aware of, sometimes we have a problem with the 18 wheelers taking the wrong turn and then coming through our city <coughs> without uh, a weight restriction. It's very interesting. The 18 wheelers are, are you know, the, the, the large 
you know, trucks have a tendency to go in the wrong direction at times, and we certainly would like to see them stay on 156 and come back around onto uh, at the 129 exit and, and come back on San Juan Road in that direction. Oftentimes they will take Lucy Brown, which is uh, tears up a county road, and then I have constituents calling me and saying that the trucks are going up towards Fremont Speak, and I've seen them myself. <laughs> It, it, it just is mind-boggling, yeah. and of course, I, we've all have seen the nuisance in, in San, city of San Juan Batista. And in fact, uh, Mr. Barnes and I have talked about the issue just yesterday. I think it was. Yeah, and uh, we certainly think that signage, better signage along, uh, you know, the T route or the commercial route is uh, the way to go. And, uh, and you're you're absolutely right. There's better signage and everything. There's another element that uh, I discovered by talking to a lot of truck drivers, and my brother's in that trucking business, is the GPS. And these truck drivers take the most shortest route to Earthbound or wherever it is, and, and, it, and it routes it there. And there's two versions of most GPSs, and it's the trucker version, and then there's the passenger uh, domestic there. And a lot of them don't have the trucking, and then they they get, get into the pedestrian uh, private uh, GPS, and that's where the problem lies. Now, I had broached that, and I was going to see if I could team up with the county and we'll write a letter to the uh, providers of these GPS, you know, TomTom uh, -tom and stuff like that, and tell them <coughs> that, uh, that they should uh, take a, a critical look at San Diego County here and the routes particularly the, uh, the Fremont Peak and the Space Grade Road, mm -hmm. as well as the city of San Juan. Yeah, and, uh, and we're Food having Vermont. problems at, out at Cannon Road uh, when the 101 backs up. Oh, yes. uh, cars and trucks are using county roads to try to bypass mm -hmm. that, that tie up. And, you know, we certainly would be very interested in tr trying yeah. to ch change that. Yeah, absolutely. No. And, uh, what a, getting back to your question about the rerouting on, on San Houston, this was something that was being explored by the county. My, myself, uh, I threw an idea out there that in order, earthbound in a very preliminary phase of their application wanted to, uh, wanted to propose shutting down a portion of San Houston Road and, and developing a new road just south of their, on their property line, uh, on the south side of their plant. And, uh, you know, one of the frustrations, I think any of us that live out in the valley that go home that way once in a while, taking Prescott, that road should have been widened years ago. And should have been widened on the dime of the, the plants out there. And somehow, in order to be agriculturally friendly, um, we've improved an intersection but, you know, we kind of were pretty laxed, if you ask me. Uh, and so an idea that I kicked around, well, why don't we just shut off San Eusto from Prescott, widen Prescott, improve the intersections at San Juan uh, Highway, and, um, you know, the T route for Earthbound would still be 129 and coming back on San Juan Road and entering in on, on the old uh, portion, and for True Leaf, it would they would have a little bit better road uh, to work with than coming on, on San Juan Road. But uh, I don't think that's a habit. Uh, in, and correct me, if, uh, Mr. Barnes probably knows more about it than I do. In the fact that you have to make certain findings uh, to for a county to vacate any road, uh, and. It, it may be difficult to do that. Uh, I'm going to put, put one disclaimer up for everybody to know. When this comes to the Board of Supervisors, I probably won't be involved in the dialogue because, my fa as everyone knows, my family owns property out there and, and uh, does business. So I'm, hmm. I have a conflict of interest. So. I have a more of a hands-off approach with Earthbound and their expansion, but 
I've been following the road real close because it, it's something that I think is really important to the whole uh, west part of the county. You so, have anything to <coughs> so I was just going to ask a question. So the bypass that's supposedly going in. So are we are we saying we're just going to not do that? It was because we were introduced to a plan that was uh, different than Prescott. Uh, and that was south of the plant, which I think was a per, uh, temporary road there at one time, along uh, along the south end of the property line there. He wouldn't know about the temporary Anderson, the old Anderson yes. road. Yes. Uh huh. Um, this would be something that would be totally different. So the the plan as it stands right now is that the um, <clears throat> the road through the earthbound site would be would be vacated and, and actually built upon by the by the earthbound folks. And that there would be a new road link along the south side of their property uh, to the to the main road. The, the difficulty is that we can't vacate the road. We the county can't vacate the road until we, un, unless we find that there's no further purpose and need for it. And so we have to construct the new road before we vacate the old road, mm -hmm. which is a hideously expensive option for earthbound. So we're struggling with that set of facts right now. Um, we'll work through it, but that's sort of where it stands right now. Mm -hmm. I know one of the <clears throat> one of the concerns that uh, just given that scenario of, of the road being closed off and, and the road going the outside is currently on the uh, the main exit out of that plant, it's really, really wide right there, which I don't know if anybody else has had this thing, but I've Saved myself. I don't know how many times by the north side or south? Uh, on the uh, west side as they come out, um, right. either he you know heading from Earthbound going back toward 101, mm -hmm. um, and you know the concern that I had was just making sure that whatever entrance and exit points there were for trucks because the trucks the trucks have a habit from. I don't know what it is with with uh, half the trucks that, that get off at 101 and try to make it earthbound, but it's like they've got a speed governor of about 10 miles an hour in both directions, and oftentimes they'll come straight out and go slow, and if you're already at some speed, that could be really bad. The fact that that road is so wide there is, uh, I think, what's probably saved several, uh, including myself. And so whatever expansion they do at that at that turn on, on their new road is, you know, whomever we need to try to get to understand that having some width in there gives the trucks some time to accelerate all the way to 10 miles an hour, uh, but also give people the chance to get around because sometimes truck, sometimes truck drivers, just, they don't like stop, starting from a complete stop. They like to roll through things, and I can understand that to a point. Some type of emerging lane that would... Uh, Big, wide merge lane. Yeah, absolutely. That's very good. How many gears did they go through to get to uh, operating speed? Oh, geez. I mean, I, th I think that's where the that's where that that long gap is. I, I don't know what you mean exactly. Well, I mean, some of those things too. got twenty plus, but um, but you got, you know, I mean, I have I have literally followed trucks from one to one getting into that place at ten miles an hour, kind of going go. <laughs> yeah. just, just for fun, I've counted, and it, and it sometimes takes about eight before they get up to any kind of speed yep. at all. Wow. Thirty to thirty-five miles an hour. Depends on the load. Wow. One of the things, uh, we hired uh, Mr. Barnes out of uh, uh, the transportation agency from uh, New Jersey. Oh, wow. And so he has a, that's his strong suit is, uh, I think, you know, roads and, and highways. And, and I, it, I certainly hope we do this right this time. Uh, I, I think we have to have the roads uh, uh, done correctly to handle this type of traffic. If uh, we have a good plant here, it provides a lot of jobs, a lot of economic benefit to the, the region. Uh, but then at the same time, uh, I, I don't think we should shortcut anything this, this time around. Okay. Okay, so, so I just want to make, understand. So the old Anderson Road, that's going to be that could be a new road. Yes. And you're also saying that Prescott Road is also going to, going to be looked at to be widened? Possibly, eventually. 
And that oh, would be more. That would happen. Would be more likely to happen if too many for it to expand or for uh -huh. their, their operation down there. The difficulty with Prescott, and I've, it's been several weeks since I looked at it exactly, so I don't remember the facts. But the difficulty is that there's a, a blue line water there, and there's, um, I think, a little bridge that we the we the county rebuilt. Uh -huh. A few years ago. On Prescott. On Prescott. Mm -hmm. And it would need to be entirely rebuilt again. Mm -hmm. Upgraded rather considerably. But the blue line is a problem because fish and wildlife gets involved in it. It becomes a several year process, as I'm sure you know. And the only difficulty with the other road is that there's a pole on it, which is just a matter of money to set it aside. Which is, it? Which is Anderson Road? The Anderson Road is, doesn't exist anymore. No. <laughs> but if you go along the property line as you, uh, on, the west, on the south end of it, you'll see, a, a, I believe it's power lines that go along the property line huh. from the San Juan Road all the way to San Justo. Huh. Okay. Okay, that used to be a road there, okay. which was with Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's the proposed uh, new road that they're going to put in. Any other yeah, up on uh, Salinas Road, there is that meditation center that was being pushed around about a year ago. Is anything happening on that? Isha. Isha. No, not that I'm aware of. Very quiet. No, I haven't heard of that. That's one of our concerns because that was uh, the building on, on a hillside that shows slides and also uh, uh, we have that hillside ordinance. Now, what we did was we adopted a hillside ordinance that reflects your, this county's hillside ordinance. Uh, not that we have the hills, but so that the county knows that we are concerned about sure. the background. Sure. And I go, I go back to Monterey Peninsula area plan, where if, if you drive in on that curb, you don't see any houses on the ridge. And that was not an accident. Right. That was part of the plan, and the skyline, all those big developments were below the ridge, and that's what we'd like to see here. So, just well, tell me, share. Well, you know, when I first ran 12 years ago, that was uh, one of the high priorities for me as well. I, I don't want our ridge lines to be cluttered uh, with houses like you see in other areas, including, you know, other parts of this county. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, myself and, and other supervisor helped developed a hillside protection ordinance. And it was hard to get past. Uh, and really the provisions are to protect the, uh, you know, the view shift on, uh, in this historical area that we enjoy in uh, San Juan Pista. And uh, I, I don't see any uh, change in that policy from the county side. Uh, if we were processing any sort of application uh, it would go through a strict review, um, and they were proposing their uh, center up on top of a hill. That was not going to happen. It was not going to happen. And um, and so, hopefully, if at some point in the future they do decide to submit an application for a project, uh, it will be done in an appropriate manner with the partnership with the city of San Juan Batista. It's in your sphere of influence, after all. Yeah, that was one of the things that we've noticed in the past that some things got biased. And my thought was either to invite the planning director here or have a joint meeting of the two commissions or whatever it was and whatever it took so that what you guys are doing, we'd know about, and what we're doing might have an effect on the county. And by working together, as we seem to be doing tonight, uh, nothing gets through the cracks. Because I've always told people, you know, if something bad goes through, you don't blame the developer. You blame the commissions or the councils or the, the boards because we're the ones that let them in. And this commission is not going to do that. So we've made it real clear that if it ain't quality, it ain't San Juan. Yeah, yeah. Bad grammar, but good planning. Yeah, they, yeah what you do affects us, of course, you know, with your projects and, and uh, what our projects certainly affect this, you know, the city and with roads. I think roads is uh, one of our uh, mm -hmm. biggest problems in, in the county. If anyone asks me what our most serious issue is right now, 
2016, it's the condition of our roads. And uh, we certainly, all three uh, jurisdictions need to work together to uh, find uh, the resources to address that and also that our new growth uh, doesn't create a, a more difficult problem. And, uh, you know, with that said, um, we, we certainly need to communicate a little bit closer, make sure that the, the new development pays for itself. Uh, I, I hope that, uh, you know, I've been urging council members that I meet with that, you know, hopefully they uh, adopt the impact fee for transportation and roads and, and uh, work with us jointly. What's the status of the, the highway widening project that's been on the books for a while? Which? 156. It's on the books. On the books. It's a very expensive project, obviously, and um, there just isn't money for that at this point. The money has not been identified to, to build that, even in, even in segments, operating segments. Okay. Is there any? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Is there anything pending on the road that used to go to the Y, that used to be the main road? Um, the Historical Society had some questions about um, oh, what, what whether we had any pictures oh. of the old Y restaurant, and it seemed like there might be something happening in that area. That at the Y at the Pacheco Pass? No, the Y, where the, oh, the, y where the highway, road. yeah. Yeah, you, you can I mean, the, the, the bridge, bridge to the nowhere. Bridge. Yeah, the, the bridge to nowhere. Where, where the highway <laughs> patrol used to be. I'm sorry, say that. The highway patrol, it used to be the road yes. to the highway patrol, it used to be the access to the highway. Okay, so. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> You're gonna laugh when you hear this. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Oh. <laughs> We're not, we're not afraid to ask embarrassing questions here. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not afraid to be embarrassed, so it's, it's perfect, a perfect combination. There are two bridges in the county that, were, that have been on our um, radar and our project development list for a long, long time. Well, there's many bridges that have been on for a long, long time. And two of them didn't make sense to me. The first was the Rosa Morata Bridge over on Fairview, which was literally a bridge to serve 19 homes, I think in the eastern hills, not on the network. It was going to cost us a couple million dollars to repair or replace a perfectly good bridge that you can go over at 30 miles an hour with a bridge you can go over at 50 miles an hour and then 100 feet ahead is the end of the road. So I've taken that to the Planning Commission and uh, I'm working that through to remove it from the capital program. The same with the Y Road Bridge. It's been a non-link, I guess you, know, you could say, a non, an incomplete link in the network for nearly two decades, and no one seems to have noticed. Now, you're a little bit closer to it than I am. I was obviously not in California for, uh, I, I'm from here. I was obviously not in California for a few years while I was in New Jersey, so my experience of the Y Road and, and that was a little bit older. But um, it doesn't make sense to me to spend $20 million or so on a bridge that very, very few cars are going to ever use. It's not a development area for the county. Uh, there are redundant links, redundant other ways to get to and from that part of the, the county. And, uh, and we were having all kinds of problems with design and fish and wildlife issues and so on. So, it's one of those I've targeted to remove. We're stepping through that process. And, and frankly, Caltrans, when I, when I said that to them, they sort of smiled and nodded. So you, you probably had to go through the process of showing how it's not being used. And yeah, exactly. that's probably why we were asked questions about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let, let me add one more thing to go back to the, the other issue about communication for just a moment. One of the things that we've started up again very recently in the last month is, the, is our development review committee and that's a, a group of everyone who matters, fire department, sheriff's department, police department, other agencies, cities, uh, 
uh, Health and Human Services, anyone who has an interest in development projects. And we're going to be reviewing projects from the glimmer in the eye stage, if you will, anywhere that, that uh, folks would like to bring them to, to the development community for reaction and for conversation in an, in an informal way so that planners and engineers for these for these folks don't go off and spend thousands and thousands of dollars doing a design only to have us throw it out. Um, we would invite you to be a part of, of that at any time you like. It meets twice monthly right now on a regular schedule and I'm happy to provide that schedule. I think you, you get the agendas. I hope you get the agendas sent out to you. Um, but we can we can certainly do more on that. What is the name of the group again? Development Review okay. Committee. Almost sounds like a formal review. Commissioners, any other questions? Is anybody in the public who would like to ask a question since we do have our supervisor and this key person with us? Okay. Easy crowd. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it, it, you know, getting back to that federal wide bridge, I, when I asked, I, that was one of the first places I took the uh, new director to, and I you know, showed him. Uh, you know the whole area and how that would fit, and he has good judgment. Uh, myself, I was hoping that he would superimpose a bridge you know, on a on a picture and send it to whoever would send the check, the money to us for building it, <laughs> and use the money to fix our roads. But uh, he didn't like that idea. So, uh, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> but I, I think it's just uh, it shows. Uh, what, what good government does. It, it will we'll go out, build projects that need to be built, and address needs that need to be need, uh, serviced. But let's not waste uh, taxpayers' money. And that was a lot of money that was uh, be wasted on a project that was just not needed. I want to thank uh, the commissioners for allowing me the time to <coughs> come answer a few questions. I, I certainly uh, enjoyed this and uh, hope to do it again soon. And if there's anything that uh, comes to mind, I always have my cell phone with me. Happy to have a cup of coffee. Uh, feel free to give me a call. Great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's good. I think it's every six months or so. Okay. Public comment. At this time, anybody in the public may speak on any subject that is not well, that is not on the agenda. If it's on the agenda, please hold your comments to that point and it'll all be part of the, the continuous record. Uh, this would be the good time now if you feel that we're doing a good job and want to tell us about it or tell the world about it or any other thing that isn't on the agenda, but uh, is any, do we have any comment sheets? No, I no. Nobody wanted to tell us about it. Okay, well, we're still here for you. Uh, next item, informal project review. Do we have anything on the books? No, Mr. Chair. Nothing? Informal review is when a developer comes in, and similar to what the county has in the development review committee, somebody can bring up a project and say, yeah, I want to do this in San Juan Bautista. You know, four-story condos. Well. Rather than have them put together architects, engineers, and studies saying it ain't going to happen in this town, and we've saved them a lot of money, a lot of time, money for their architects, engineers, and their own time doing something that is not going to make it in the city. It's an informal review. There's no cost, but they get to present it and get some, you know, we're not afraid to tell you if we don't like it, if it isn't San Juanish enough. So uh, there's nobody who has any proposed projects. We'll let that one go by. The next item is the consent agenda to approve the affidavit of posting of the agenda, to approve the affidavits of posting of the public hearing notices, approve the minutes of October 6, 2015. I have a couple of corrections on C. Okay. Um, on page two of the minutes, paragraph last. Which, what's to start with? City Manager Grimsley. Oh, okay. So about the fourth line down, Jerry Guibert should be Jerry with a G. Okay, thank you. And then on page three, item B, 
assistant planner, starts with the assistant planner, Lukeen. It says there was discussion and changes were suggested were made. So it probably should be suggested, were suggested and made, or were suggested to be made. Suggestions were. Is that B? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There the was, second sentence. Yeah, there was discussion and changes were suggested were made. <laughs> okay. Suggested okay, were I'll suggested. Make okay. I'll make it make sense. Okay. <laughs> you could just take off the word made. Yeah. So with those corrections, I move that we accept item A, B, and C together. I'll second it. Call for the vote. Commissioner Gibert? Aye. Commissioner Medeiros? Aye. Commissioner Gretasoff? Aye. Commissioner Franco? Aye. All members of the commission be present. The motion is stated by the mayor passes unanimously. Okay. Item six, we have public hearings now. Uh, one, the first one is consider a minor subdivision at 44 Church Street. The applicant is Al V. Inc. Successors parcel 002 290 039. And we're looking for a resolution accepting the categorical exemption uh, for the project under CEQA and then a resolution approving the tentative map with conditions, mitigation measures, and monitoring. Staff. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman and uh, members of the Planning Commission, uh, if you're familiar with this, this was brought to you uh, at the last meeting. This is a uh, minor subdivision that is taking a uh, large lot uh, 10,842 square foot lot and uh, split it into two parcels. This is a result of uh, recently the Planning Commission uh, changed the uh, zoning district uh, standards for R1 lots and elected to say that an R1 district is just not a 7,000 square foot lot but it could be a 6,000 or a 5,000 square foot lot, depending on the topography, circumstances, and stuff. The applicant came to us about five months ago and uh, was interested in this parcel. He uh, proposed to uh, purchase it, and he had a plan that he showed me, and it was about a 3,000 square foot large house, four-car garage. And uh, I looked at the lay of the land and the earthwork that have to be accommodated to that, and it resulted in uh, a large lot, a large house. And I asked him, I says, why don't you consider what the Planning Commission had recently done of maybe splitting it and creating two smaller lots and building smaller units that would be a little bit more affordable to uh, entry level type houses. And so he's followed my suggestion that, and submitted this application for your consideration is to create two lots off of this large 10,842 square foot lot as to, to have two lots there and two smaller units. And I have uh, a uh, diagram here on the board that I can kind of show you in terms of the square footage and the runoff and the lot coverage and the difference. Here, the applicant has submitted a large uh, plan where he's splitting it in half and is creating two parcels here, roughly right around uh, 16, 1700 feet with a two car garage in each one. The lot coverage on that is about 32%. This was his original application for one large 2800 square foot house, four car garage. The lot coverage on this is about 31% within 180 square feet of the total lot coverage. The cost of this house here, just in the construction cost and the grading, has got to be substantially more than the individual ones down here. And, and it was that reason that he elected to say, hey, I'm going to ask the commission to take a look at this and see if we can get two units here. It's going to be a few more cars and traffics but it's going to be smaller units that are going to give you more affordability in terms of that respect. Now, one of the considerations is, is that this lot was a part of a four-lot subdivision that was done 
15 years ago or something like that. And uh, there was no provision for any of these lots that sit up on Church Street to drain down to Monterey Street. And uh, Mr. Vass has the, the obligation to all his stormwater, as well as his sewage, he's got to pump it back up to Fifth Street and pump that water back up the runoff back to Church Street and then drain it there. There was no provisions in the planning of those four lots at that time to allow the stormwater and the sewer to go down to uh, Monterey Street. It was unfortunate, but I think Mr. Vallis has stepped forward. He says he will solve the problems to make sure that it will not result in uh, runoff to the adjacent property. How will that pump station be managed in perpetuity? Uh, the, that's uh, one of the conditions that we have written <coughs> into the conditions of approval. A lift station, and it'll have to have some type of an emergency service and stuff like that, and then there'll be a maintenance uh, agreement between the property owners to maintain it and bring it up. And those are things that uh, we'll condition it, and then he'll bring forward his plans of how we're going to do it, and then we'll come back and then we'll have some type of a maintenance agreement. That's very similar to what we did on uh, uh, the uh, San Antonio Street. There's four lots and there's a storm drain system there and we have a development agreement. We've conditioned it for the storm drain to come out all into one and be treated. And then that agreement is between the four property owners that they'll have to take and maintain that in perpetuity. So they share that? They share that and it will be true. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that I wanted to stress is, is that uh, about three years ago, we embarked upon a housing element, and we finished it in uh, 2013, and I think a number of you were here, and uh, Matt Leal started it, and I think Matt Obrecht came through and finished it up. And when we adopted that, we struggled with the community development uh, people up in uh, Sacramento, where they said that they would encourage higher densities, and at that, that time they wanted, and you'll see some of them in the general plan where they wanted 30 units per acre, you know, and I says, gee, that's too much for a rural area like this. So we tapered it down to uh, 20 to 21 units per acre is the maximum. And they approved our housing element on that basis to say we want to, want you to encourage smaller lots, more higher densities, and more affordability and everything, and that was one of the the highlights that they approved our commitment to do in our housing element and and the other one was streamlining the constraints. And as you recall, we had a lot of constraints in, in our housing element and this commission as well as the city council uh, took that to heart and we've eliminated a lot of the constraints and we've streamlined the process, we've lowered the fees so that we can make more affordable housing to our community. The applicant is in the audience here, and uh, he's certainly welcome to take uh, questions and show his commitment to completing uh, this program. Okay, Mr. Vias, would you step forward? Good evening. Good evening. I'm just uh, thank you for considering this, and I think that we've, uh, like uh, Mr. Lindsay has said, we, we've tried to uh, mitigate anything that. Uh, has got us between point A and point B. I've been following your meetings for the last six months and hearing what you're trying to bring to San Juan. I like what you said earlier about if it's not quality, it's not San Juan. Um, I recently built a house on North Street. Uh, I really like to hang my hat on that. It's a nice house. I think it, uh, it really goes with San Juan. It, um, you know, some of the, some of the, thing, the projects that I see coming through right now, I, you know, I'd like to see the architecture. I have a lot of family that's uh, been here in San Juan for many decades, and uh, I'm willing to do and uphold any of the conditions that are that are brought here. And um, obviously, you'll see my plans before we uh, are actually building those through your architectural review. And I'm willing to jump through uh, whatever hoops we need to jump through to make it a nice quality project. Now you've reviewed all these things. Do you have any problems at all with the recommended conditions, mitigations, or whatever? Not at all. Okay. And I think what he's alluding to is condition. 20 and uh, just the areas is that he recognizes that his individual homes will be brought to you for site design review. Yeah. 
<laughs> Before we get to that point, I'd mm -hmm. like to suggest that the houses not be identical. Um, and I don't know if that was your intention at all, but the, on Monterey, we had two houses built last year, I guess, that by the same builder, and yeah. they're different. And it's nice to have a different elevation. <clears throat> What I was uh, thinking about doing, because I've done this uh, many times, is I was going to do one that had that uh, smooth stucco mission look with the mission tile on it, and I was going to do the other one um, similar in design, but all craftsman. So it would have, uh, you know, the shingles on the gables and then siding on it to, to make them look uh, different. Um, but um, I think they go with San Juan, and obviously I'm going to uh, put my name on it. I want it to be a, a good quality project, and again, I'm willing to jump through whatever hoops uh, I'm asking. Have you spoken with the uh, <clears throat> the neighboring properties going toward Monterey about going in that direction with your with both the the, the sewer system and the drainage? We have. Um, it, it's actually one of those things as as uh, Mr. Grimsey has gone out. Uh, uh, it's something that probably should have been handled when they did the four lot subdivision. Um, well, we're not all the way there yet. I think, you know, Mr. Thomas, is, uh, he, he sounded uh, pretty agree agreeable. Uh, she didn't. I didn't want to get in the middle of a domestic uh, dispute, so I, 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 didn't, I don't want to push on anyone. Um, I'm, I'm still going to explore that, but um, either way, I'm, I'm willing to uh, take care of the, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a state law. I have to take care of that water, the drainage, and, and I'm willing to do that. And I have used these uh, pump stations before. Um, and I've done them on solar, so you have backup solar and so you, you never have a problem with the actual pumping. So, um, again, I'm willing to jump through whatever hoops are necessary. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, on your application, the project address is listed as Zero Church Street. Why is that? Uh, that, there was no address on that, oh. and uh, so we went and took it, and we're, uh, right now we've identified it. Okay. When he comes forward, it'll be 44 okay. Church Streets, and so if there's two lots, then we'll have to have a 42 and a 44. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. okay. thank you, sir. Thank you. thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak for or against? No cards? That would be a good project. No neighbors. No electronics, no letters, no nothing. Hmm. Okay. Uh, commissioners? Um, Any discussion? I, I just wanted to point out on page one, the subject, minor subdivision, says MS 2014-1201. It probably should be 2015. Or 2016? 2016. No, it, 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 uh, the, the day that they're applied, we put 2015, oh, okay. and then the month is generally the thing, and you're correct. But this is the only the, place where it's 14. Everything 14, else and is everything 15. else is 15. Yeah, okay, that's it's typographical okay. error. Yeah, right. uh, so it is 15? 15, yeah. Uh, December. I think okay. it sounds like a good project. I like the fact the way they use the lot rather than one big yes. homengus yes. McMansion. Two houses that fit the neighborhood, and I think that's a lot better. Yeah, I think I think the conditions of approval, I think, is, speaks for themselves, and also the uh, mit mitigation measures, uh, Exhibit B. I think they all pretty much uh, address what we what we need to do with this one project, and uh, so I'm I'm comfortable with it. Um, one thing we've talked about at strategic planning is that new homes be solar ready. Is that something we want to require? Uh, and that, that could be when you get the uh, site design review okay. is to make sure that uh, there is a roof plane area in the south uh, direction that would accommodate that. You know, those are things that, uh, that uh, uh, Al is aware of and, he, and when he gets into the design, he'll bring it forward to show you how that uh, solar application will work. Well, it sounds like he already has, yeah, yeah. it sounds like mm -hmm. he's already got solar somewhat built into the project. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. key thing, though, remember, that we're creating lots, not we're putting houses on. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Just so you know, I, I built uh, 17 solar homes start to finish, and on every one of my houses, I put a solar jack there. So it's all ready for the inverter and for the panels to go, so it's not a water issue later 
which you know increases my liability. But that will all be there and set up. And if it's feasible, um, when I'm done with all the hoops you make me jump through, uh, I'll definitely put some solar if it's, uh, it's it, it, you know if it works. Oh. But it will have the capability. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't know if we're going to deal with the mitigation or the conditions now, but on well, you're six, going to approve them, so okay. Look, bring on it up. page three, item sixteen. Item sixteen. Um, line three, regarding construction hours. Between eight thirty a.m. to five p.m. Monday through Saturday, no construction should be allowed on Sunday. I'd like to add or holidays on every every time we have a construction issue. Or holidays, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's a big point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the monitoring is important because once upon a time these have conditions and nobody followed up on them and the conditions were never complied with. And as we see today, we've had problems with this. So someplace along the line, CEQA was amended in, well, who's going to do what? Who's going to keep an eye on it? And who's going to take the rap for it if it isn't done? And I think it made for a lot better process. On the, uh, Roger, on the uh, mitigating measures, um, on MM-9, um, page four, uh, page five, excuse me, on page five, um, in regards to putting water, do we issue a water meter for each construction site? Is that how the water is When they do allocated? applied water during compaction there, they come in and then rent a, a water meter that'll uh, fill their trucks and okay. pay for it. Yeah, right. Now, if we have available the, uh, uh, and from our wastewater treatment, reclaim water, uh, then we'll fire that up and then they'll go down to Third Street on the plant to fill up their thing from there. And it was interesting you asked that is Caltrans has just asked that uh, uh, in their construction of the 156 is that they want to utilize as much reclaim water as possible. And so uh, we're, uh, gearing up for that same sequence. Mm. Cool. Yeah. I mean, we can't use reclaimed water here in the city, but they can use it? Well, I think we've uh, crossed over that bridge and we've got uh, an agreement with the Regional Water Quality Control Board Good. for the monitoring and the testing, and uh, we'll be firing that up for this summer for the, the uh, Abbey Park, uh, the Lux Library, as well as the cemetery. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. Okay, if there's no other comments, the chair will accept a motion for action. And, and there's only one change in the uh, monitoring uh, and reporting, and that would be MM5, and we wanted to add the monitoring responsible would be is, is uh, we would add in there building inspector and city engineer, okay? Mm -hmm. And the only reason I say that is uh, that the MM5 is seismic uh, review and Building inspectors generally don't have the authority to look at the seismic anomalies of the structure. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Good, bad, or indifferent. Okay, the chair entertains a motion for action. The first and most important is to um, handle the CEQA, oh. and that would be the first it's resolution. And that number would be, Trish? The three. Mm -hmm. Three. And that would be the uh, resolution of the Planning Commission uh, uh, that uh, uh, does, uh, establishes a category exemption under Article 19, mm -hmm. Section 15, 315 of the California Environmental Quality mm -hmm. Act. Okay. So I'll make a motion. I'll second that motion. Three. For the... Uh, uh, resolution two, uh, 2016, and that's going to be what? Three. Oh, three. Oh, three. Yes. Okay. Gonna... Oh. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Guevara? Aye. Commissioner Medeiros? Aye. Commissioner Granisov? Aye. Chairman Franco? Aye. All members of the commission being present, the motion is taken by the maker passes unanimously. 
Now we know the project is a categorically exempt from CEQA. Now it's the project itself. The resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of San Juan Bautista approving the tentative map for minor subdivision 2015-1201 at 44 Church Street. Did you be 42 and 44? No. 42 and 44. Oh, okay, 42 and 44. As we now know. Okay. I move to approve resolution 2016-04. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Call for the vote. Commissioner Guevara? Aye. Commissioner Medeiros? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Grossoff? Aye. Chairman Franco? Aye. All members of the commission being present, the motion as stated by the maker passes unanimously. Okay, the next item here, 6B, consider a, approving the 2035 general plan documents. The first one is approving <coughs> the general plan background report with a recommendation to the city council uh, for adoption. Second is the resolution approving the 2035 general plan environmental impact report with a recommendation of the council for adoption. And third, consider the resolution approving the 2035 general plan itself with a recommendation for adoption by the city council. Staff. Yeah, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, uh, there's three documents and uh, uh, we like to uh, phrase that uh, the most important is what we're achieving on the last approval and that is the general plan. That's gonna be your guideline and vision for the next 20 years uh, and it's gonna guide us through uh, the development and the vision and the policies and the programs that were there. The very first one was is that the background report. And uh, uh, Matt can kind of uh, highlight it and everything. It's, it's, it's really uh, setting the tone of, uh, of what San Juan's all about and giving you a broad picture of why we need the general plan and the vision and everything. It's the fluff that supports the environmental document and the general plan. Upon the adoption of all three of these, this will be put on the shelf and very rarely it will be reviewed in terms of uh, context. It's strictly mostly for the background of how they approached and how they, the team developed it. The next phase is, is the environmental impact report and always it's the guiding light of giving you the authority to move forward and approve documentations and plans and general plans and, and any uh, development uh, re uh, regulations. And that environmental aspect is the California Environmental Quality Act. And there's certain uh, requirements that have to be met in there. And the team that went through there has a, a, a voluminous uh, Thing. And I know uh, Eric uh, went through a lot of it and everything, and it's just very uh, cumbersome in terms of there. But the intent was is to approach all of the potential impacts and make sure that it complies with the CEQA guidelines before you can go on to the final step of approving our general plan. And, and they're not necessarily to, graded by the pound, right? Yes. No. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Matt because Matt is more uh, familiar than anybody with it because he's edited every page of it <laughs> in every sentence, yes. <laughs> Matt, it's all yours. I don't have a lot more to add. Um, I mm -hmm. think the background report in general was, um, it's a great snapshot of what the existing conditions were at the time uh, that we started writing the general plan. And I think that's the main importance of that document is that, you know, the, the general plan itself tends to be a little bit more um, succinct and, um, bear. It just has the important lines and it's really short. Uh, if people want to know what was going on that made things be written that way, that's when you refer back to the background report. So um, we really didn't get a lot of comments on that. I think uh, Commissioner <coughs> Bear had one on a table in there. We fixed some misspelling, but other than that, um, it doesn't seem too concerned. It was more than misspelling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so anyway, we fixed, the, we fixed the problems with that, and then the environmental impact report, as Roger said, it's basically just sort of the legal um, support for the general plan. Uh, the students did a good job going through and exploring all of the different potential impacts of um, 
the actions that could occur uh, under the direction of that document and stated the ways in which those impacts can be mitigated and that's the importance of that document. As you can see there's lots of things you have to do for you know construction sites and different things regarding um, you know possible artifacts that people might find or you know things that are built in a flood zone or there's lots of things that you have to, to mitigate for any sort of action that you do. And then the, the plan itself um, is obviously the most important and um, there were a few things. I think the biggest was removing one program that was just not correct. Uh, it, it, I think it had to do with uh, expanding the historic district um, to include another already existing historic district. So uh, we just removed the thing uh, and that really wasn't a problem. We just moved all the rest of them up. So uh, I, I've included, I think you've got the packet with the pictures showing uh, the first the first two basically just show that 1.1.1.2 um, .1 moved up to 1.1.1.1 and so forth, <laughs> so forth down the rest of that section. And then the same thing uh, in the implementation matrix, which is the, the really succinct version of all of the programs that are included in the document. Um, Commissioner uh, Gretisoff pointed out a few things about the wording regarding the fire department. Uh, so I uh, worked with Roger to get some new wording with that and replaced it and that's in both uh, the text of the document on page 148, in the worded policy on 214, and then in the implementation matrix on 302. Uh, so those are all the instances where that is located. And then I think there's was, there was a little confusion simply because we haven't gone through this process in quite a while because when we originally wrote it, uh, it was yeah, <laughs> I wrote a year ago, more than a year ago. Uh, so just so you know, if your constituents ask you, the beginning part of the document explores uh, multiple alternatives and that was the way we approached the general plan process. So when we as students sat down and started writing this, we put together three distinct scenarios. A business as usual approach where everything would just go on the way it's going now. Uh, we had a uh, clustered growth alternative and we had a dynamic growth alternative and those sort of explored a medium growth scenario and a really accelerated growth scenario with different building heights and uh, densities and things like that and explored what the impacts of those things would be. <coughs> we took the results of those scenarios and we presented them at a public meeting uh, that we had over at the community center. We had the boards up with the different aspects of the different plans. Uh, and we did a sticker exercise where all the people in attendance of the meeting got to indicate which parts of which plans they uh, agreed with. Uh, they got to tell us what they really didn't want to see. And we recorded it all. I think we did a survey or two as well uh, where we sort of got out in the community and did a plan ban thing. And we took all that information and incorporated that into the preferred growth scenario, which comes after that. So all of those scenarios are included in the general plan document. And so if you, if if, if a layperson picks it up and just opens randomly to a page, they might see some things that don't fit with the current municipal code, and that's why. It's because those were options we explored and then ruled out, but they're still part of the document. So mm -hmm. if, if that happens, just remind them to go to the preferred growth alternative, and then that's what drove the creation of the goals, objectives, policies, and programs in the rest of it. Thank you. And I think... That, that was the trap I got stuck in. Like, <laughs> what are you, what are you kidding? <laughs> it's easy to do it. Yeah, yeah. Like that, so, uh, and I only received comments from uh, Commissioner Gretisoff and Commissioner Dubert, and I don't think you were even at the last meeting. So I would love to hear what Commissioner Franco, or Chair, Chairman Franco and Commissioner Madero uh, thought upon review. I think what happens here is that you've got a plan that was basically pulled together by younger people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's critical because the generation you're looking at right now, we're not going to be, we may not be around here for the ultimate development of the city. And so why should we be doing plans that meet our needs but don't reflect the needs of the younger generation who's going to have to live with this thing and live with the preferred alternative or more if they want it. And I just thought that the fact that it was a, a university group uh, but again, under the, under the sponsorship of a veteran planner, uh, that makes a difference. And again, I, I truly believe that younger people should be making the rules for their generation because we made a lot for ourselves. And, and with that note, too, is, is that 
I know uh, Matt and I had talked about it in many times. You're casting a, a, a plan that's going to cover us to the year 2035, and it's hard to visualize culturally what's there. And uh, we have to rely on the fact that we can, and you have the authority to modify the general plan from time to time as you see things coming. And that's a great tool for you to uh, modify it you know, and amend it. Yeah, we'll be administering this thing for the duration of our terms here, mm -hmm. but uh, it's going to go beyond us. I mean, I'll be 95, and uh, I probably have other things on mine. <laughs> but again, I want to be in a town that is nice and is well-developed and reflects some of the efforts that myself and others we're putting in several years of our time, free time, uh, towards something. So I'm just glad that a younger generation got involved with it. Now you can encourage some young people to try for that empty seat over here. You know? Live here oh, live here and yeah. live here. Well, that's the other thing too. That, that's, I jump in, but I don't. <laughs> but that's where, that's where that housing element comes in. We got young people coming in. Can they even afford to live in this town? Will there be houses in this town? And so the modifications we made through the housing element, looking for smaller lots, not necessarily mashing the town so you don't identify, can't recognize it, but having a town where there's more opportunities. So you don't have a brain drain and everybody who's qualified to do something has to leave. We're looking for some more uh, people at uh, the industries that bring us jobs. And again, that plan will pick that up too. I was very impressed that you're already doing the, the smaller lot size and that you have developers willing to, to jump in on that. Buy into it, yeah. That's very impressive. As someone looking for a house in Santa Cruz County right now, <laughs> I'm like, man, I wish we could do some more of that there. <laughs> So yeah, that, that, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Okay. And from there? Yeah, I, I was part, in the very beginning from strategic planning committee to, to going to all the meetings, what have you, just to put, compile this whole thing from the very get-go. And I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the turnout from the whole town uh, and, and, and the, um, uh, the voice that was shared, the dialogue that was going on in the very beginning and how that all played a big part in, in putting this whole package together. Uh, I think the students from uh, Cal Poly, you yourself, uh, did an excellent job uh, uh, just putting this whole thing together. Uh, I think uh, I, I go along with uh, Ernest, that uh, Commissioner uh, Ernest or Franco, that uh, because of a lot of people, young people got involved with this, I also saw a lot of young people from San Juan Batista get involved with it too as well and, and made an integral part of putting this together. And I never, as far as going through it with a fine tooth comb, I lived through it from the very get go and I, I, I think it's well put together. I think it speaks for San Juan Batista today, the present and in the future. And we got to thank you and everybody else that had a lot to do, including the people from San Juan Batista. So. Uh, it's there. It's all. It's all. It's all put together well, and it speaks for all of us. So I'm ready to approve. Okay. Well, thank you. And I want to thank all the strategic planning committee members too. I was on that when I was working here, and I mean, they they didn't wait. You know, <laughs> they they got started on a lot of the things yeah. in the implementation matrix already. So yeah. um, I would just applaud all the people. I know. Maggie, are you on it as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of people in this room who, who yeah. have played a part already and are going to continue great work with that moving forward. So, um, so thank you for all the help with that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad that you know you started with it and you, you went through the whole thing publicly with us. And I think that's the, the, that, that's important too. Instead of having two or three students who weren't even at the beginning but at the end, but the continuity that you brought to us, I think, was important. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you. Good job. Okay. What about the people? Now, again, this is a public hearing, and anybody in the audience has a right to appear, be heard, for or against <coughs> or in between. I think uh, Mr. Orbeck would like to hear if, if there's any pluses or minuses that you'd like to say about it. Does anybody have a, a good comment or a contrary comment? You did such a good job, man. This just stuns everybody. <laughs> uh -oh. You almost got away. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Bob Fulton with the Rancho Vista Project. And I sat through all of those meetings um, that you held and Matt held and Cal Poly 
uh, coordinated. And I want to say I was very impressed with the process. And our project came out of those meetings, listening to what people liked, what they didn't like. And uh, they did a great job of soliciting comments and soliciting input from the Strategic Planning Committee as well as the town of San Juan Batista. Um, I think they did a great job on it. So I just wanted to throw that comment out there that I was very impressed and it did wonders for me being able to hear from everybody at all those meetings. So nice work. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. I, might, I might add on that too that if a developer does come in there, is he or she going to go up against people who don't know what they want in their town? Maybe yes, maybe no. That general plan said, this is what we want. This is San Juan Bautista. If you don't like it, go down the hill someplace. But again, for a developer, and, and you saw it happen here, a major development, but he, he uh, pulled a lot of it out of the efforts of the city to define how they wanted the town to grow. So I think that was good. Thank you for the comment, sir. Okay, anybody else? Good, bad, or indifferent? You have the right to say it all. Okay. Commissioner, is there anything you want to say beyond it? It was an interesting process. It was good to go through it to see the implementation matrix, which just shouldn't be sitting on the wall. Uh, we need to be, and the Strategic Planning Committee will be using that as a guideline for how to proceed. Yeah. Was, I think yeah, that's their main emphasis yeah. is to look at that matrix and come up with the implementation of a lot of the programs. It's got to be a living mm -hmm. document. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you think something happens, it can be changed, whatever it takes to define <coughs> San Juan Bautista. I was uh, at, I think I missed the first meeting or two because it was right not too long after I had moved in, but uh, the, the group's dedication to this was just, it was neat to see. Um, the document itself, which yes, I did read it all, and woof, it's, it's a lot of reading, <laughs> but uh, it, it was... It was just neat to see how it all kind of came together. It all made sense for this town. Um, well written. And uh, again, uh, Matt and the uh, students and Cornelia should be really proud of the document of, of everything they've done here. They've done a fantastic job. I, I was surprised, not surprised, but just remind, startled to look at the heading on the, each page of the background with the date, October 30th, 2014. And that was, that was, toward, that was the end of it. I mean, that wasn't even the beginning of it. It's been a long process. Yep. <clears throat> okay. If there's no other comments from the commissioners, uh, the chair entertains motion for action. Well, we've got three documents to, so are we going to do all three, or are we no, still take them one at a time. Take one at a time. Just in case somebody doesn't want to. Are we going to go to the public on all three of them? Is that what we're saying? Uh, I think the public has had comments on everything so far, because his presentation I, encompassed I'm, everything, so I, I would accept that. So why don't we make a motion on all three? I would say that's a good idea. I was ready to go last, last month. Would that, do you see any problem with that? No, you could do it all at once, or you can take them individually. Wait a minute, there's three resolutions, though. Yeah, right, yeah. Maybe we should take one, because each one has to be signed off. Each one has yeah. signed off, and, each, and particularly like on the, uh, the, uh, the second one. one on the environmental, there are findings that you should be aware of. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. okay. Let's take the first one. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution uh, number 2016-05. Of the Planning Commission of the City of San Juan Batista approving the general plan background <coughs> report and recommending to the City Council the same. I'll second that motion. Commissioner Guevara? Aye. Commissioner Medeiros? Aye. Commissioner Gretasov? Aye. Chairman Franco? Aye. All members of the Commission being present, the motion is stated by the Maker Passage Unanimous. Well, we agree on one thing we agree on the background report. But I think that's important because I think that's like uh, transparency. How did they get to this conclusion? And it's all written. Okay, so we have a second one. Approving the general plan of EIR. I move to approve resolution 2016-06, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of San Juan Batista, approving the final environmental impact report for the 2035 general plan and recommending to the city council the same. 
Is there a second? Second. Commissioner DeBear? Aye. Commissioner Medeiros? Aye. Commissioner Grassoff? Aye. Chairman Franco? Aye. All members of the commission being present, the motion is stated by the maker passes unanimously. Okay, that's CEQA. Now, all that leads to one main item. Whoa. A third resolution, something about approving our general plan, our new general plan. I'm a little nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a big step because let's face it, this is going to be 20 years. 20 years. I don't know. <laughs> what, what's nice about it, it's, it's actually a living, doc, it's a living document. Right. That means that we can continue to oversee it and to make sure that uh, we got, got it all right. And so that's, I, I feel comfortable today we're, we're taking the right step. And also it, it can be amended. The state says four times a year maximum. So yeah. it's not just a willy nilly at anybody's convenience. Yeah. It's a you know, scheduled program. But again, you're right. It is, it is nothing to take lightly. Okay. No other comments from the commission? The chair rec uh, entertains a motion for action on the general plan itself. I move to approve resolution 2016 7. A resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of San Juan Batista recommending to the City Council the adoption of the 2035 General Plan. Is there a second? I'll second it. Commissioner Guiver? Aye. Commissioner Medeiros? Aye. Commissioner Gretasov? Aye. Chairman Franco? Aye. All members of the Commission being present, the motion is stated by the unanimous. Right on, folks. Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. The only bad note is that we won't be seeing Matt much anymore. Oh. <laughs> Unless he comes up with another group. Right. You get your PhD and you can teach the next and session. I, and I'd like to thank Matt because uh, Matt was uh, on the Cal Poly team and then we hired him and he was uh, just a great asset to us and, and helped us through that time. And, and I'd like to also mm. thank the commissioners who are doing an outstanding job in the review. Great. Okay. Okay, now, up to mundane business. Consider an amendment to the municipal code for the rules and regulations for home occupations for, for business permits for home occupations. Or just regulations for home occupations. Yeah. Okay, staff. And I just, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Rudy here because I asked him to, to do this, but in the... Uh, in the operations of our city, most people would come in to Michelle at the counter and says, hey, I want a business license to do a home occupation. And she'd come back to me and I'd ask her a few questions and we're there. But there was no guidelines and there was no established rules. And I told Rudy, I says, we should have something on the books that give the guidance for who can, can uh, operate uh, their business out of their homes. And Rudy researched it, and he came up with a good plan. And I'm going to turn it over to him, and he can there. <coughs> then it establishes the the context of who can do what in their homes, and not create a public nuisance to their neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Commissioners, we'll, we'll listen. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so um, you know, as uh, just re uh, reiterating a little bit from what uh, Roger had mentioned right now, uh, there is no actual mechanism in our municipal code to guide us or incorporate any type of regulations for home occupations. Um, therefore, it's pretty much an open field of what a home occupation could be in the city. And we don't have no regulation as to uh, consider what is, uh, I guess, a legitimate use and what could be a use that will accommodate the neighborhood because most of these home occupations are going to be in residential areas. So uh, we bring this for today uh, to amend the municipal code and add this as a mechanism to better help staff to uh, uh, go about uh, figuring out what would be considered a, a permiss permittable home occupation and what wouldn't. And, and with that, I think... I asked Rudy after we went through all of the context of that, there was a lot of uh, uh, acronyms and, uh, and definitions. And I says, we really should have a home occupancy definition page of the thing. And, and we 
pull that together and I handed it out to you. You know, that'll give you something. And by no means uh, we're referring that this is uh, what, uh, everything you need. If you see something in there that maybe needs a little bit better qualification, feel free and uh, make the recommendations to us. There were some, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if this is the time or not, what, yeah. I had some clarifications. Yeah. Um, line number, uh, line number 78, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, back up, line number 75, mm -hmm. um, it says a home occupation shall be limited to only one client, patient, or pupil. Um, if you look at number 123, it contradicts it. It says instructional classes not exceeding two students at one time. So we right. have a contradiction. One says you can only have one pupil, i.e. student, and the other one says you can have two. Yeah. Um. So I don't know whether we, whether, and I, I can see the, in the instructional classes like either a, uh, call it a piano class or a, um, um, you know, just academic help of having two students. So it might, you know, my, my suggestion might be just uh, take out or pupil and just put client or patient. Might be one option. But that's, yeah. there is a contract, contradiction there. Um, line let's, well, let's talk about one okay. or two people. Okay. Um, would, would two people max, would you have two people and two students at the same time for anything? What was the question? Well, if you, okay, do you want to say maximum one person or maximum two persons, two clients? Well, somewhere. Yeah. And I think uh, Eric came up with a thing, this is just say only one client oh. and, or, and pupil. Well, so the, the client the, could be... Uh, the client is a pupil. Uh, yeah, right, the pupil, right. Because whether I'm mm -hmm. coming in to get one mm -hmm. of your handcrafted yeah. items or whether I'm coming mm -hmm. in for a voice lesson yeah. or... And I think the intent was is that uh, we don't want to give it home occupancy and then next thing you know, we got 30 room. kids yeah. you know, lined up. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's going to be there. I, but I mean, I don't see there a big issue with there being up to two people at a time yeah. overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, in, in, in this, it, it, yeah. there, there's just, there's the mm -hmm. conflict. Um, I can see, I mean, in a student application, I could see there possibly being a piano lesson where you might have two people. I could see someone who's tutoring mathematics to two separate people. Right. Uh, maybe, I could see those scenarios yeah, happening specifically yeah. to students. I so could maybe, also. Maybe yeah. we should say a home occupancy shall be limited to uh, t two clients. Two clients mm -hmm. uh, per day? Mm hmm. Oh, I don't know at any one time. At any one time. time. Any one time. So two clients, oh, right. okay. patients, mm -hmm. or or pupils. Or pupils, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. And then that fair. makes it consistent with the, with the other one. Yeah, the other one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Clients. Good point. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, line number 77. 77. Uh, <laughs> starting back in 76. Is small residence care homes, uh, small... Uh, family home care centers, etc., licensed by the state required a conditional use. I think it's supposed to be requires. requires. Okay. Um, real quick, back up to number 53. Uh, no persons not residing on the premises may be employed at the site of the home occupation. On line 157, says uh, use uh, this is these are items uh, where was my contradiction in that if you're going to have home oh, health people yeah you're going to yeah. if you have six people there who are who are um, what do you call it care cared cared people yeah, yeah. that wouldn't be a home occupation that'd be a service right. no person's in the main so the if I've got six foster occupation. children in there with <coughs> six uh, seniors who can't walk around, I might need some help. Yeah, oh, but no. that's not a home occupation. Actually, the, 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 the contradiction in that is, is that 53 says no persons not residing on the premises right. may be employed. In other words, you have to live at the home to be employed. Number, uh, 
line number 157 states uh, the use that is employing more than two persons on site that reside off site. And that one there specifically says, now is it because that's a condition of approval you can then allow that? Yeah. Is that where that? Well, let's go one yeah. back. I mean, again, who would have two persons on site? That would be a care facility. You'd have two people. If I'm running a, uh, six people, I might need help. You're a nurse's aide, mm -hmm. you're a health aide, or something like that. Uh, that's not a home occupation because that's already a service that's licensed. Okay. So to me, a home occupation, when you are doing something, uh, creating something, artwork, uh, sharing music, uh, other skills like that, I, I, differ I differentiate that from a nursing home. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why we put the nursing home in the conditional use, yeah. you know, where we recognize that there might be uh, some outside people more employed. But a home occupancy, the standards uh, operating procedure is, is it's for individuals. Okay. Yeah. Uh, line, line number 80. Mm -hmm. It says, only one vehicle or trailer with a capacity no greater than one ton may be used directly or indirectly. And on a very technical term, is that actual physical capacity of the pickup truck? They're called one ton. Most, uh, most half-ton trucks will hold 2,200 pounds plus. And so I know it's a very technicality, but I don't even know how that would be worded to cover that or if it even needs to yeah, be covered. So, yeah. and, and parking... Um, so you got a two-car garage. So if you have a business there, and you have a two-car garage, so that means you're uh, you really ha only have room for one car and a trailer. Or if you put two cars in that garage, where does the trailer go? It on, has on to, the, on theoretically, the, uh, it has to go behind a fence. Yeah. It could be yeah. next to the house, but it has to be behind a fence. Or or in the garage. In the garage. Yeah. So if there's no uh, access to the backyard or something like that, and you can't you can't have a trailer, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. unless you park and, it in the garage. And we have a situation that. Yeah. that but uh, I mean, I'm saying, there. if you have a two-car garage and you have two cars, uh, you're going to have to make. If you're going to keep a trailer, you're going to have to make room for that trailer in the garage, <laughs> or Excuse have it stored off premise. Yeah. Now, or stored off premises. Yeah. I know in, in uh, many situations, like a, uh, like landscaping. Some of these guys have trailers, and they do park them at their homes, but it's only when they're home. But when they're out doing their work, they, they use the trailer. So, And that's in a lot of cases, but in some cases I know um, the, the trailers aren't used and they're left on the premises. They're left either that or, the or on the street. Right. Yeah, we should and, have a provision. And, you can't park, and, a, you can't park a, a, a trailer used for commercial purposes on the city street. Yeah. Yeah. And we struggled with this because... If a person says, hey, I want to run my landscaping out of my house, but then he has five employees mm -hmm. and five uh, pickups and five trailers, we don't want them right. at, in front of that house. Right. Yeah, He's got to have them someplace else. He's going to operate that. One can come and take that and leave. You know, and, and, and that's what we're always struggling with is if we give a home occupancy to somebody, next thing you know, they've got 10 buses in front of their house. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we should be, and any vehicle involved with a home occupation shouldn't be on the street. It should be off the street. Whether he gets the exception to be in the front yard or something like that, well, you still want it covered, but it shouldn't be on the public right of way. Well, my, my question is more to than the, than the capacity of the, I mean, if we're getting very technical on it, but. And I don't even know that it needs to be addressed. What's that? I mean, now the understanding that this says can't you can't uh, only one vehicle or tr uh, one vehicle or trailer with capacity no greater than one ton. If you're doing a landscape, single guys doing a landscaping business with. Mm -hmm. And the reason we picked the one ton, and yeah. that's a, a 350, you know, uh, category of a, a truck and everything. Right. Once you get into the 550 series, mm -hmm. a ton and a half, two tons, then you got multiple wheels dualies and that's more of a commercial application than in, that you wanted you don't want to see in a residential area i i guess maybe more more my point is maybe that should be in like quotations mark a one ton because half ton pickup trucks nowadays have 
over a one ton capacity to them. Again, yeah. this is getting very technical, but maybe just put down a one ton vehicle. Because uh, I understand the differences between all those trucks, but I mean, a half ton pickup truck will carry over 2,000 pounds. And it, sound, it sounds silly and technical, but I mean, a, a, a F-350 or, or a one ton Chevy will carry 3,500 pounds in the bed of it. Tech, by, by this, it says you're not allowed to use that. To, that just seemed, I, I don't think that's the intent of it. I just think we need right. to put some sort of highlight. I think that would, that would cover it if you just put yeah. down a one ton truck. One ton. One. Something else, you don't want to make a contractor's yard in the backyard of every right. one of these guys. Exactly. You could have, you know, 10 tons of uh, and, compost and, and rocks and, and whatnot. And we, and we we struggled a lot, and, and Rudy and I talking about it, where do we want to have it to where we encourage commercial enterprise in residential areas? And that's that fine line where we yeah. don't want that. Residential should be for people mm -hmm. that want to reside there, and commercial should not, activity should not be run right next to them. Mm -hmm. There's a <clears throat> large flatbed trailer that picks up vehicles. It parks at an island warehouse. That, that would eliminate, this would eliminate that probably. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and, and I've seen in jurisdictions where a guy will have a, a big uh, a ten wheeler or a, a transfer truck and he's parking it next to his house when he mm -hmm. comes home and he leaves three o'clock in the morning yeah. and you don't want that oh, yeah. and right. he starts that big diesel up at yeah. three o'clock in the morning and wakes <clears throat> everybody up. You know? I've had those complaints, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's exactly what happens. Because they gotta let them run for a little yeah. bit the one the engine's yep. up. Yeah. The Hollister doesn't have this rule, I don't think. It's my son the Son's neighbors has it semi across the street. Mm -hmm. okay. um, line 103. One phone call. Yeah. It says uh, May function as a home based business where the complaint with all the other provisions. I think it's supposed to be <laughs> compliant. Mm -hmm. Compliant. You got, it. you got it. The eyes in the wrong place. I uh, know. Um. On 126, your cottage food operation would be subject to the health department regulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're pretty tight about that. Mm -hmm. Number. And again, I think that when somebody comes to the counter, I think they ought to be told, you know, that there are health department regulations. Yeah. Before you should just send, them, just send them out to the health department and forget about them until they come back. Because I know it's, there has to be a complete wall between the, commercial kitchen and the living quarters. Mm -hmm. You can't access through them. I mean, it's, it's really tight. I would like to suggest that on line 127, the following are examples of uses that are not incidental. I would bold not, and I would also bold prohibited on the next line. Capital N-O-T? Hmm? You want to capitalize in not? Bold. Well, bold is good. Oh, okay. So so go back. Uh, so going back to 103, is that in compliant then? Or is that is that to read? In compliant. In where compliant with all other provisions. Where where the? the no, take out take out the and change complaint to compliant. compliant. Just to compliant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where compliant. Yeah, that works. Where compliant. <coughs> okay. Still doesn't read. Oh, well, I see what you meant. We're compliant, yeah. On number, on line 159, at the sense. end of the line, it should be patient, patient at a time. Where, uh, well, I'm sorry, what line? Mm -hmm. On line 159. At a time rather than sat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rather than patient sat, it should well, be maybe patient they're gonna sit. at. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> As opposed to standing? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good patient, good patient. Okay, 166 there, having more than three occupations in the dwelling. You want to talk about that one, Rudy? Yeah, um, I haven't necessarily come across this situation, but there are uh, uh, some instances where uh, the residence or the uh, owner of the residence has more than one home occupations operating out of that uh, particular residence. Um, now, they might all... Uh, accommodate each other 
being, um, you know, bookkeeper, you know, for some clients, then does other types of services for somebody else, whether it be tax services or whatnot. So rather than having all these uh, different types of uh, home occupations being run, we're, we want to limit them to, to maybe one out of the residence rather than having, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, three types of uh, services being offered out of one building I, or one residence. I, I don't think that would be appropriate for any type of a neighborhood. I, I could, I they could want to see do three. Do we, we might want to take that to two because I can see a husband and wife and the oh, husband yeah. will say, hey, I'm doing income tax. Mm -hmm. And the husband says, no, I'm, I'm also doing financial uh, estate planning. Or an artist. Mm -hmm. and, or an artist, you see. And two would probably complement it. But when you get into three, oh, your son wants to do something? Yeah. yeah. You know, if you want to do daughter, that much... <laughs> Downtown needs has some empty buildings that can yeah, use. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. yeah. So go from three to two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I had a clarification. Line 140. These are prohibited okay. home occupations. Spiritual advisors, i.e. fortune tellers. And uh, as much as I may not uh, buy into that particular occupation, um, I'm just wondering how that would differ from counselors and psychotherapists in that one supported by science and one might not be supported by science. <laughs> well, th these guys would; these guys need police uh, permits to to operate operate mm -hmm. for one thing. A uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, those kind of people are licensed by the state of California to do their business. Tarot cards are something that's run by. <laughs> well, that's fortune telling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm all right with it. I just. It's also, they're also called spiritual consultants. But you know, in all honesty, you have uh, the Roma people. Uh, their belief is that a person who does this kind of work has a. Uh, uh, an aura or a spell for his area. And if another person wants to be in there, you don't want the spells overpowering each other. And so they're looking for space between them. And this, again, this is, this, is from, this is from actual life. Okay. So they, um, <laughs> but again, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a belief and I, I won't knock it. I, just, I didn't knock it then. Uh, but I, I do know that this kind of, Non-licensed to put stuff. It does require police review. Yep. I think that's all I saw. Okay. Uh, the, we're we're going to include the definitions, though, right? Does anybody have an extra copy of the definitions? Right here. Oh, it was in your. Um, you didn't get one. No, Accessory building client. I feel left out. Operation. Yeah. Uh, uh, what about? Um, I'll just look over your shoulder. The, the bottom part. I mean, violation and enforcement. Uh, it reads uh, pretty plain there, but it doesn't include uh, okay. law, oh, uh, police, you. or anything like that. You don't. I mean, how, what? What are you going to do? Issue. A, <coughs> it says here the pursuant these uh, any it's business it's activities normal. conducting in any residential zone and contrary to the provisions of these. Regulation is unlawful and deemed a public nuisance yeah. and shall be abated, eliminated, yeah, and right. enjoined. And that's consistent with our existing uh, uh, code in uh, Chapter 13. And it's more of a uh, regulations of planning and uses and the planning director and the, and the planners. We uh, write them letters and stuff like that. If it becomes to where they have ignored it, then we get the district attorney and the sheriff's department to serve him notices okay. and stuff. It's, it's a procedure. But mm -hmm. uh, but that's in the, uh, mm -hmm. the chapter 13? Chapter 13, yeah. yeah. That's enforcement, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, uh, on uh, 85, well, 83 to 85, um, 
when we say uh, the you shall not employ the storage of pesticides or flammable explosives or hazardous materials other I would say isn't it other than general use materials for the home I mean they're going to have pesticides in there yeah right, and sprays and, and they are flammable and they are mm -hmm. so um, and it, well I mean other than that that kind of stuff is that what you're saying and how do you know that it's uh, I don't know I, I other than general uh, uh, other than what home normally, chemicals, right? Other than what would normally be found yeah. within... Yeah, because you've seen some of these trailers that have these big uh, balloons yeah. on them that are full of toxic mm -hmm. chemicals. Right. And some of them, if they, were to, if they would have a leak or have, have an accident where they were spilled on the pavement, uh, that could be hazardous. I remember yeah. we talked about a tanker full of um, dra drain of sodium hydroxide for a water treatment plant. If that had gone over in that neighborhood, you know, one of those long things that's spreading all over the all over the community could hurt a lot of people. That and the fumes. So you definitely don't want to have, mm -hmm. but I think you, store, you, large storage yeah. of it. But I think you got to bear in mind that that is only applicable this this uh, 12 and 13 for home occupancies. It has nothing to do with a regular right. residential house right. that you're there. If you don't have a home occupancy, you can store your thing. Yeah. We're saying in home occupancy activities. Uh, that home occupancy, you, we should restrict these mm -hmm. because they might be. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, I want a home occupancy, and I and I want to get into uh, pyrotechnics. Great. Yeah, I well, make my own fireworks. Yeah. Fireworks. <laughs> yeah, fireworks. You know. Yeah. And, uh, then, then, then it would be applicable for yeah. home occupancy. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, if you had gun sales, yeah, mm -hmm. that would be uh, mm -hmm. the perfect place that people would want to hit that place because mm -hmm. you get in there and you get yourself a guaranteed ar armory. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody have any problem with the definitions? <coughs> Do you want us to uh, take this back and then correct all these things and we can bring them back to you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have a public comment. Yeah. Oh, public, uh, public comment. Mm -hmm. public comment. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The lady looks familiar. This applies only to single-family residential zoning because most of us live in a commercial mixed use and we don't need a home occupancy permit. Permits. No, but you'd be getting a business license and if you came yeah. up with hazardous yeah. materials, yeah. they would be brought up immediately. This yeah. is for what people want to do in the home. Yeah. You know, that's you want a, to teach that's music? in a residential district, yeah. Any residential or, or R1? Not no, mixed we're, use? we're a, a home where people live in. That's what we're dealing with. It's your home. Your home is a home, and you want to do some selling or some uh, drum. I say, okay, somebody wants to do music instruction. Okay. Sure, you go in a commercial district, that's not an issue. But in the neighborhood, do you want to have you know, six people at one time, uh, 10 people? Uh, what do you call it? When you get a bunch of people together to hear a concert? These can be controlled because they are can be objectionable in a residential area or where people live. Whether it's a condo complex or whether it's an apartment complex or a bunch of single families, uh, you're going to bring in additional parking, you're going to bring in more traffic. Uh, that could be objectionable to the people in the neighborhood. I, I, Chairman Franco, I do understand that the principle behind this, except that is it only, I, I, have, I live in a mixed use district. Mm -hmm. I have a home. I have a business on the property. I have two licenses for my business site. Uh, does this apply only to those people who do not live in a mixed use district? That is correct. Uh, only, yeah. only residential, R1, 2, and 3. So I thought maybe it should say that. That's, that's true. Mm -hmm. I hear you. No, I heard you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think that's what you. I think it should be more specific. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I do know. too. Wait a if, if we're talking about the home, if, if we're talking about a home occupation, it's where you physically reside. This is your residence, and you want to do a business. Now, if there you have business license in a different district for something. That's beyond that. But we're talking now about somebody who moves in. Like, supposing I wanted to start a uh, planning consulting business, which I, I could do. Okay, come down and get my permit. But we don't want to have, you know, 10 people coming to visit me 
or have eight hours of people parked on the streets there. I know that. The other thing that I'm questioning is no sign or advertisement shall be publicly displayed on or off the premises relating to the home occupation. What's the use of having it if you can't advertise it? <laughs> well, remember, you're in a residential district, and that's the key. That's the key thing. It's a residential district, and uh, didn't the sign ordinance have something about? It does. I, I so it's think one square foot, I think. It's, it's not. It's yeah, not it's, a billboard. It's a it's very, very small, small. Just to let yeah. people know that, yeah. yeah, Gillardy in the trees or something. Or then perhaps we should say um, a business sign must comply with mm -hmm. the sign guidelines yeah. or something. Yeah. That would make a lot more sense. What line is that? 68. Okay, um, we'll just put refer to sign code and then staff can come up with the words. Yeah. So, so um, I mean, I could, technically speaking, so if you do have mixed use and your living quarters are there, you could, in a separate instance, technically run a business in your living quarters. But it would come under this ordinance. It would come under, then, yeah. a, well, then a permit would still still be needed, right? I would think. I don't know. Right. Or, well, I don't know. I'm just technically throwing Our mixed out use there. talks about commercial with residential above or side next to it. So it, de it clearly de de delineates residential from the commercial aspect of that, but both allowed in the same district. So if you want to do a full fledged business, you go downstairs in the shop. Mm -hmm. If you want to have teach music, that's a whole different ballgame. Mm -hmm. And I'm really surprised that uh, uh, about the parking of uh, vehicles, a landscaping business, it seems to me, should not be one of the, the uh, options to have in that, that area. Well, technically, it should be the office four. But the parking and all of that is a. And, we, and again, a again, any, any other vehicles have to be behind the front yard setback or hidden away, but they can't be on the street. Because gardening service, it's only the opposites there and not... That's what it should be. Form. And they can't keep 10 tons of, uh, like I said, compost or different soils or rocks, which are all used in the business. Okay. We will make the corrections and bring it back uh, okay. at the next meeting. If you have okay. any comments on the, on the definitions, just... Give staff a buzz. Oh, can you can you put that in alpha order? Yeah. And on uh, line forty. Line forty. Uh, section C below. <laughs> Loud and clear. Silly autocorrect. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, good work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're basically cleaning up all these little details slowly but surely. So this goes to the next meeting. Two, oh, three. And another. Okay, another cleanup item. We have uh, considered an amendment to the Muni Code that adding a noise ordinance. Staff. Okay. We have worked on the noise noise ordinance for some time. And I think we started with uh, Matt Leal and then uh, Matt Overbeck and now Rudy. And I think we're bringing it now to a point where uh, we want to get some teeth into it and so that we have some regulations for uh, noise. Uh, we, I've had over the years a lot of uh, complaints of uh, landscapers starting at 6 o'clock in the morning and cranking up their <laughs> their. Uh, machinery and everything and so and I've had to go and stop them uh, and say hey wait a minute you got to at least wait till 7:30 or 8 o'clock you know and so, so I think this is what it is and I think uh, Rudy's put together a pretty comprehensive noise ordinance um, line 124 according to standards adopted by the city manager Regarding the use of leaf blowers, I'd like to, to uh, outlaw them, but <laughs> personal. So, are you going to create standards or what? Mm, yeah, I think the standards are here, Page. and that we are going to enforce them. 
so maybe we should. Okay. Uh, maybe we should make that clear. Because maybe we should rewrite that to say is is uh, the city management uh, and the staff will enforce the standards that are established in the ordinance. City standards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't want to have this thing saying the city manager is making new laws. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Which yeah. would really be mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But to enforce the laws, that's part of the job. Mm -hmm. Line 119, <clears throat> no person shall operate any leaf blowers on Sundays and holidays. So if I That's want to mow my lawn on Sunday, no, no, no electric leaf blower. Are we talking about electric leaf blowers too? Well, uh, maybe yeah. we should say no person shall operate a gas, gas right. uh, operated leaf blower on Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, well, electric goes... It's very quiet, you know. Right, but my, my lawnmower makes a lot of noise. I mean, certainly. Two cycle engine? No, but. But it doesn't. You don't have to go over rocks. <laughs> it doesn't eliminate lawnmowers. No, I understand. I'm yeah. making the, okay. the correlation that mm -hmm. it's more it's noisy than, any, than, any, than my electric leaf blower would be. Or, I mean, I, I, I understand it, but at some point, um, Home maintenance for most people in town, I would imagine, would happen on either Saturday or Sunday. It certainly is in my home. And, and I, would, I would say, if anything, Sunday, but a holiday, uh, that's where uh, people are home and doing a lot of things in the yard. You mm -hmm. know? And, yep. You know, Sunday would be, I, I equate that to the day of worship where you sleep in, you get ready, you bring the family to church and spend a quiet time, you know. And, and no lawnmowers. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Look, I just want to blow leaves on Sunday is all I'm saying. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I think it's uh, strictly we're talking about uh, mm -hmm. gasoline motor uh, leaf blowers because you did go on to say so, some things about a muffler. Mm -hmm. and, and the electric ones do not have a muffler. Mm -hmm. Same thing for lawnmowers. They should have a good yeah. muffler on there, too. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I've got a cam in mine. It, it's got a nice rumble. Um, on um, hours for uh, uh, going back to number 90, uh, line 93. 93. Uh, this has to do with hours for the residential areas, R1, R2, R3, and mixed use. Um, in regards to construction hours and it appears as the oh, hang on what am I missing here what oh um, boy I made good notes except on that mm -hmm. one hmm. well that really stinks Oh, I see where it is. It says, um, oh, never mind. I had it backwards on that one. Okay. Um, ref, refuse, col oh, I'm sorry, line item number 132, 131 through 133. Refuse collection, collection activities shall be permitted between the hours of 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Provided that, that they do not produce a noise and level of excess of 95 decibels. Um, Garbage trucks aren't that noisy. We're going to keep those hours, though. Uh, they, they would. I mean, I've chased them down at 5 a.m. Oh. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, in a commercial zone, I mean, our problem is, is our commercial zone in, well, our mixed use area in San Juan is close to uh, residential residential areas but I would I would hate to see garbage trucks running up and down residential areas at 4 a.m. I know the contract with the garbage company right now is 6 a.m. Um, but I just think that's a well, that's really I think that needs to be changed what would you make it to I'd make it 6 a.m. like it like it is now to go with the contract to go with the contract um, if we want to put in a provision for industrial area, uh, refuse collection in industrial areas at 4 a.m., because the industrial areas tend to be quite a distance away from residential, and I don't, I don't, I don't see a huge, a huge issue there. But 
even the commercial areas that we have within within the city here, it, it's still relatively close to. Well, you want residential. refuse collection activities within the city, within the residential areas. I'm sorry. Okay, on 131, refuse collection, refuse collection activities okay. within the residential areas. Mm -hmm. Shall be permitted between the hours of. Then you can put down you your know, time. Do you want it? <clears throat> To extend as late as nine o'clock. <clears throat> Seems awfully late. Yeah. Six o'clock. I think it sounds like a more reasonable hour from mm -hmm. six a.m. to six p.m. Yeah. I'd say that's reasonable. Maybe it's just upside down. So you want six p.m. <laughs> to six a.m. six a.m. to six p.m. Yeah. It's a typo okay. Order. So refuse activities in residential areas. I mean, why nine p.m.? What's I've never heard of such a thing. Well, maybe when there's a holiday and they have to double up, mm. they might take more time. But I yeah, I mean, the only provision on that is is that your things get pushed out a day, so they might be coming on Sunday. Well, like I said, the, the only guys collecting is the one that the guys who have the contract with the city. Right. And the city has made it to be six o'clock in the morning. So that, that's consistent. Mm-hmm. And if they want to change it, they say, wait a minute, our ordinance says. Then they can come in and, and apply for, for a reclassification or a ordinance amendment. Yep, agreed. Okay. So the contract is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m.? Okay. Yes, let's do that. We're good then. And then and this, this is tough. There's some stuff, you know, just... Yeah, I know. I get it. Mm -hmm. Wine... Lines number 195 through 200. What about, what, about 130, oh. what, what about 137? Shouldn't it read emergencies, emergency noises are exempt? Shouldn't the word noises be in there? Emergency vehicles, actually. It's supposed to be, no, we're talking about noise, right? Yeah, and I would imagine that that would any be if, if any my house completely noise? floods oh. and I've got to have a gasoline powered pump to pump out the basement. Well, that's noise. that's that's yeah. an emergency. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, or a siren. Mm -hmm. Siren. So emergency. Noises, Good example. Emergency. A siren. <laughs> I would say noises and or si uh, sirens. sirens. And sirens, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong here. Emergencies. Is that the word we want? We're dealing with noise. If you if you if you flood your your basement, you call for a pumper. They don't make a lot of noise. Gasoline powered ones can be a little noisy. Oh. Or you're saying just typical emergencies doesn't have to be a fire, doesn't have to be. No, that's all, that's public. That's public health and safety. I don't see that. We regulate Tornado. That here. Generators running 24/7. We can't. Generators well, can be noisy. That's a that's a good. Yeah, that's generators a good point. Uh, with lights out and what have you. You we mean when we have a, lot, a blackout or something like that? We used to dig holes. Yeah. So there's an exception. Yeah, we used to dig holes and put the generators under underground, you know, because of the noise. So we say during city emergencies. Uh, I mean, I I think I, th I think if a tree falls falls into my house and I'm trying to get I'm trying to get boards nailed up across it and I've got an air compressor out there and, and I'm out a there with a nail gun yeah, the and a chainsaw, chainsaw that, that's, and whatever. Those are not quiet. That's an emergency. I'm not going to be out trimming my trees at midnight. I might be. But well, that's that's noise, related to, noise related to emergency equipment. Emergency situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Noise is, a, uh, yeah, noise is related to emergency situation. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. And then on uh, line uh, 140, did you guys cover that one too? Uh, might as well put the number 90 in there as well. Since you did that elsewhere, you say the word ninety. Mm -hmm. What line again? Uh, one forty. <clears throat> one forty. And one forty-one. Oh. You have you have twenty-five feet in parentheses. You put twenty-five. Oh. Ninety. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Well, actually, if you go from when you go from z uh, zero to ten, you write them out. From eleven up is the number is what's used. Oh. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, I've never seen it done that way, but yeah, no, I'd go nine nine zero DBA. Okay. 
and 25 feet. I, I, I'd say one or the other. Write it out or use the numerals, but I don't think we need both of them. Okay. Do the legal people want you to write them out? Have you had that problem? When we send it for codification, they usually have standards. What, what, what do they put first? Write it out with a num numeral in parentheses? Including both, yes. Put both. I've seen that a lot in the municipal code. But, but written out and then numeral in parentheses? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Numeral Well, I've never seen 90 decibels written out, but... Yeah, you can write, I guess you can do, I don't know what to do with that one. I'm not a grammarian. I refer that one to a teacher. I'll refer to the attorney. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're going to catch it before it goes in, up to the council anyway. Okay. But at least we know there's an issue here. Mm -hmm. We'll wait until they get us back our adjudication. What do you think? Any others that you want to... On or? Um. Now let's. Where's the enforcement of this thing? I think. And again, I think Rudy will correct these, and then we'll bring them back at the next meeting, okay. so then we have a nice, mm -hmm. clean addition. Mm -hmm. You want to bring something about a decibel meter? Mm -hmm. If we don't have one, but or what or recommendations for the city should look into, or give us yeah. an idea of what kind of machines out there. With with this here, and I've talked to members of the council, and we are going to purchase one. You know. Okay, but if you have and some pictures, you know, we can show. Because the sheriff's department wants one to enforce, particularly on the motorcycle section here. Yeah. So if that includes it, I guess you want to set it up on a tripod. Yeah. With a chip on it, mm -hmm. pull it up on your computer. Yeah. Before we approve this, should we have a demonstration? <laughs> I saw one of those one time. The guy set the machine, and when he had 120 decibels in that room, you knew yeah. what 120 decibels yeah. was. Mm -hmm. speaker cards. Make sure we have the right tones. Does anybody in the public want to talk to us? No, I've got no speaker cards on there. Nobody wants to talk about noise. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, in that case... Uh, if there's we'll no other com commissioner comments, we'll just let, refer that one to staff for we'll ready back. for approval okay. next month. Sounds okay. good. Okay. And now, mm -hmm. the next item we have is consider approving initial study and a neg negative declaration mm -hmm. for domestic water well number four on San Juan Hollister Road. Staff. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, uh, we've uh, taken steps to test drill a, a well site, and now uh, we're getting ready for the acquisition of it and then submitting the necessary stuff to the State Water Drinking Water Division. And uh, one of the items that we need is some type of environmental clearance to go forward with the uh, construction of the well site. And this is the, uh, one of those steps and stuff like that. Uh, I think Commissioner Franco pointed out to us that there were some typos in there, and uh, Trish and I are going through that, and then uh, we will uh, get that corrected so that uh, we'll, when we, you make the recommendation to our city council, it'll be a complete thing. And, and then this document here will then be submitted as part of our application to the State uh, Water Resources Board uh, Drinking Water Division for the construction of the new well. Yeah, if you have any comments uh, of substance, uh, we'll talk about those. But rather than spend time on, on, <clears throat> on grammar and stuff like that, we could spend an hour doing that uh, and then any of these things. So my thought was, if you have comment, you have know, spelling, um, corrections, whatnot, just turn them into to Trish. And that way she can run, run through them. And now we can just say, hey, you know, <clears throat> this concept is missing. This substance is missing. I, and, and just focus on planning as opposed to uh, English one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, it'll save us a lot of time. Okay. I mean, no, we go I, through I, it on the ordinance because it's... I was it's thinking <clears throat> that staff... I mean, over time, staff should pick up on these things, but that's what I was thinking rather than bring it before us mm -hmm. to think that we have to 
check every spelling. But anyway, oh, yeah. that's a very good point. But, it, but as you're reading it, if something comes up, you know, you yeah. just, and that's and, what I do. I don't go looking for them, but they oh, pop up. Yeah, so no, and, I just give them to Trish and, and say, some, hey. Sometimes uh, we get behind schedule and stuff like that, and then we're rushing and having a lot of things, and then we just kind of overlook a lot of little things. Uh, I don't see how that's that That's understandable, happen. you know, and I, would it I be, apologize, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible or out of place to, if, if we're going to do that, and that's, that would work fine by me is to, uh, you know, these other documents where we have the lines numbered mm -hmm. to be able to refer to, hey, line item oh. number this, it says mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, does that mess up how these things get? Yeah, you could do it. Uh, some of the uh, initial study stuff is pre-formatted. Okay. We just put it in there. So uh, it would if it's significant, you can call it in. But if it's substance, that's what we need to go public with. Yeah, right. Yeah. We do that in public. But just, you know, misspelled my name, yeah. there's no problem. Well, maybe we should that turn never to the, happens with my name. We should turn to the public and see if they want to correct some of the... I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> A lot of hands would go up. And I think uh, on the second page and under section one is the crux of the, of the thing, you know, on the second yeah. page, the last... <coughs> Last paragraph under 1.1 1 .1 is is that's giving you the texture of what we had to do is is that we received a citation order for noncompliance uh, we've uh, complied with the citation ordinance and uh, has submitted uh, uh, an action plan that was highlighted in their uh, directives and. Uh, that action plan requires us certain milestones, and that's what we're, and that's why this is being prepared. That we now our next milestone is submit the application to them. So we don't have much of a choice. We have to move on this thing. Yes. Sure. Okay, I went through this thing, and I, I feel that we've covered all the bases for it. Explanations, justifications, or what you know. Yeah, I've read it through too. So let's see. Does the public, anybody in the public, want to talk about the proposed initial initial study and negative declaration for the well number four? It has to do with water, Matt. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> progress on it. <laughs> you only worry about it when it comes up to the top. So we're still on the ground yet. Okay. Uh, does anybody any comments? No public comments. No. Okay, commissioners. Do you have anything mm -hmm. significant? Okay, if there being no other issues, uh, staff moves for, staff entertains a motion for action. Um, There's a resolution here. What, now, this, this well has not been drilled yet, right? Just the test well. Nothing oh, the test well has, so it's good water. Good we water, know it's good yeah. water, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And, uh, <laughs> and, and when, you, uh, when you said in here on, I know, it's, uh, the well will be a deep 12 inch or 12 foot diameter? 12 inch diameter. Uh, it's, you had you had the uh, symbol for a foot instead of uh, inch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there it is. Fifty, 50 one, again. One point three. <laughs> I know it was a twelve. Uh, yeah, I, th so I knew it would be about a twelve foot well. That's that's a big one. Yeah, right. We yeah. do not want to run out of water. A diameter. <laughs> yeah, that's what the yeah. old timer wells used to be big. The yeah. big ones. You know. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, entertain a motion. Okay. And I would. Uh, uh, Recommend the motion be as is uh, subject to the corrections as noted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I move to approve resolution 2016 8. Yeah. Yeah, uh, easy, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of San Juan Batista approving the initial study and negative declaration for the construction of well number four on a 0 0.223 acre site situated 100 feet north of the San Juan Hollister Road, 900 feet west of Mission Vineyard Road, with corrections. As, I second, corrected. as corrected. As corrected, thank you. Okay, we have motion and a second. Is there a roll call? <laughs> Is there a roll call? Commissioner Aye. Commissioner Bedaris? Aye. Commissioner Gretzel? Aye. Chairman Franco? Aye. All members of the commission being present, the motion is decided to make your passage. Oh, isn't this nice? Oh, deep, We're just moving along here. Uh, 620 feet. Wow. Feet down? Mm -hmm. 620 feet. In a 12 foot hole. It's, it's got to be dinosaur. Dirt everywhere. <laughs> dinosaur water. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, 
True Leaf out there, they, they went down 1,600. Yeah. Oh, 1,600? Wow. True. That is dinosaur water. Mm -hmm. Who went 1,600? It's got true, little... True Leaf, you know, they built, uh, drilled a big well out uh, off, right off Prescott. Uh, Prescott oh, that's Road, uh, yeah. Earthbound? It went 1,600 feet. Yeah. So the ground table is really... Yeah. But it's good water. Yeah. Wow. It's awesome water. Okay, now we've got some discussion items. Oh. Mm. Review the existing fencing regulations in the Muni Code and Design Guidelines. Are we up to that tonight? I don't have a staff report on this. <sighs> Review existing fencing regulations. Was that one the staff wanted to go with or continue? Uh, 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 we could continue it. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're going to have a Thursday. We're going to have a, a meeting on the design guidelines, and there's fencing in there, and so maybe we can talk about uh, incorporating the, the fencing because there's okay. a section in there, and I think it's appropriate to uh, probably pull uh, A as well as C because we want to integrate that into a, okay. the design guidelines. My biggest concern was is that I didn't want to have a separate document uh, for Third Street, you know, and uh, and because we have a design guidelines that covers a lot of issues, and then maybe integrate it, and it's a it's a formal document that we re we refer to quite often. Mm -hmm. I think the historic district should be separate. Mm -hmm. the, his the historic downtown streetscape. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about for Thursday, right? Down to historic downtown streetscape. Oh, so you're saying as a separate document for historical streetscape? I think it should be within the design guidelines, oh, but I yeah. don't see that fencing should be yeah. part of it. No, but fencing is already in the design guidelines. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. So we can add that and, uh, and uh, embellish it or, uh, or modify it or something like that, you know, what you feel is necessary. And then put a special section in there, uh, historical district. Yeah. And okay. yeah. Well, and fencing was one of the things that I was going to work yeah. Yeah, and I haven't. Yeah. Well, yeah, and yeah. I, I knew that was going to be the case. So. So well, let's maybe leave it off discussion until we bring it back for action. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I get a moment or three, I can. Now that you're done with that. Yeah, we just continue it. Seven hundred page. Oh. Okay. Uh, three meetings this week and the baby shower on Saturday, right? <laughs> okay, that leaves us with seven B review planning commission bylaws. Now. Mm -hmm. Bylaws have been operating rules for conducting meetings and things, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that we had any, and I was ready to ask Commissioner Garrett to start drafting some from some samples, and then it came to our attention that there were bylaws, and that's good. So went over them, and I think you did too. So how do we want to word this thing so that it helps us in, in case we get an issue how to uh, proceed. Like one, I felt that we, I'd like to see the commission shall only consider complete applications. And that'll help staff saying, hey, it's half an application. You don't come in halfway. You come in next month with a full application. Has that happened? We've had stuff that is missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the ones that Roger had to draw the thing for the guy at uh, Hardy Innes, member because the guy didn't oh. have it clear. And this way, Roger can say, hey, the commission won't buy that if it isn't done by you. Then staying in office until you're replaced. They turn in your resignation, and I'd like to see you stay until it's either been accepted or, mm -hmm. in fact, I'd like to see it until your, your successor is, is seated. I don't know if that's going to be an office, uh, be an ordinance, but uh, I think that's something we should consider. It should be put in as a suggestion because if you've got an emergency medical issue or something that prohibits you, well, there, there are be there are exceptions. Yeah. yeah, but in general, so I would like to have had Commissioner Garrett stay until the council says, okay, he's he's going to sit in that seat now. Even though they would ex they would we never will accept your resignation, but you stay there until we come up with your successor. That to me would make sure that the commission always had a quorum or at least five people to discuss and keep working with it. Um, that was one of the ones I had. Under quorum, um, let's see, 
Commissioner abstaining from participation because of a conflict of interest as determined by state law shall not be counted toward the quorum. But I'd put as determined by state law. Uh, there may be something about reminding people on this thing about the FPPC 700, you know, the mm -hmm. annual thing. Mm -hmm. Would that be something that people would, that the, being in the bylaws, you're going to be subject to that? And if you can't, then you don't want to be on this commission. Um, there's a couple of this third word in there is should be drop off the E on or and down on the under speakers speaker times at the bottom uh, the fourth line that should not exceed there's a four in there we have a we have a general guideline of three minutes per speaker which I have let go because I feel that People have something to say, and if they don't get they don't get to say it, that'd be a basis for uh, an appeal. So they didn't get a chance to be heard by the by the public. So I think it's up to the chairman and the commission to say, hey, you know, three minutes, or this needs to be said, brought to us, so we can consider it. Couple or we can always continue it and ask the person to put it down in writing, so that it becomes part of the permanent record. A couple of other quick typos. Sure. I know we didn't go over it before. Um, yeah, this is our document. Yeah. Page one, secretary, second line, the duties of the sec secretary, re a I think it's supposed to be R as. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fact is fast. That's okay. Ernie got the exceed. Um, page three, reopening public hearings, second line. Um, oh, that's right. Commission that's for deliberation and action public hearings should. Yeah, just a gap. Yeah. yeah. Just a mm -hmm. And other than that, it looked good. Okay, how about um, attendance? Number nine on page two. Any commissioner who knows that he or she will be unable to attend a scheduled meeting of the commission shall not shall notify the secretary at least two hours prior to the meeting. The secretary will notify the chair. Uh, is that by phone, email, or what? How do we do it? I mean, because, uh, you know, let's say as soon as you're... you reach me, it's done. Huh? As soon as I'm reached. Oh, okay, I understand it. But what, what, what if some reason I can't reach you? Or... Yeah, I'm not there that day or something. Yeah. Yeah, we don't always... So know. if I send an email two hours before and it's documented as such to you, let's say, maybe that'll cover it? Even though, you know. I think some, if we write to you, we should copy Rudy, just in case you're not. Yeah, something agree. like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's. Is two hours good. enough? That's four o'clock well, on. I if you're stuck in traffic. I thought that was pretty good. Um, good school works for you? Yeah, just uh, okay. foot shall notify the secretary or planner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then. How about um, secretary or staff? And then. Uh, and staff, yeah. yeah. Um, G on page three. Uh, applicant for representation, no action will be taken unless the applicant is present. Is there any other s special considerations for that? Should there be? Well, from time to time, I have a lot of you know, applicants I mean, that come there and they're, they're contented. They look at the staff report, they meet with us, and they say, gee, hey, that's fine. Uh, bring it we, to the commission. And they don't want to come and. Uh, Make a presentation. Well, I don't actually don't have a problem with it. I think it needs to be expanded a little bit. We, we just had the lot line adjustment uh, across the highway, and the applicant wasn't present, but they had a representation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they were able to convey that everybody understood exactly what was going on mm -hmm. and was in it. But I, I think that if something's coming here, they should either be here or have or represent it. or have a representative and author it. You know, mm -hmm. so just the applicant is present or represented. Yeah, to do it. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I figure it's a courtesy item because we're giving him you know, the respect to say, hey, this is important to you. We want to make sure we're getting it from you and right there, the first time. If there's some special circumstance as to why that can't happen, then we should see a letter or something explaining what. Yes, they can now. ask for continuance. Yeah, I yeah. can't make it. My attorney can't make it. Can you continue yeah. it to the March meeting? No problem. Yeah, I'd rather have them here. There's no question. But yeah. if if staff or the uh, city finds some kind of situation where they, you know, anyway, okay.
All right. Tell me he's not making good points. If he tries not to be here, yeah, or if he really yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it kind of leaves the door open. There are a lot of properties downtown that are owned from people, five people out of out of state. Yeah. Yeah. So the application has to have their name because we can't act on something without the property owner's uh, authorization. <coughs> And the uh, tenant can't do that without his authorization. So mm. the application is going to have the tenant or the yeah the owner or his <coughs> representative, his attorney, and then the applicant is actually going to do the work. Yeah, and I and I would imagine in those scenarios that they have a uh, landlord or management company, somebody that could definitely represent them here. Well, we designated Trish as secretary of the commission and the parents that the city clerk is the secretary of the commission. But it was in here unless you so choose to select somebody else. But we did. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about that? Well, we feel about that. We like you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? So what are we going to do with this? Is, is this? We just approve it as just, our. We're but just. This is just discussion, so. Actually, yeah, I want to discuss it, but. Uh, but you know, we have something else in terms of. Is there any closure on this? Um. When you when it's all put together, you close it by adopting it. Mm -hmm. I thought I had to go to city council too, didn't it? Really? Isn't that what we discussed last time? Okay, so um, so how do we? How do we introduce the city council? Let's see. Sir and or madam. <laughs> a resolution. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I don't know that both. I didn't see that this was ever passed by resolution yeah. previously. I, I, I didn't have that in my record. Okay. I could look at it. No, it was a, it, you know, it's got an adoption thing on it someplace. So the commission had to take an action on it so that everybody, yeah. you know, everybody agrees on it. I think that we brought this because Pat brought forth some other items, and a lot of those really didn't fall under the bylaws criteria. I think what he was looking for was what constitutes a complete application. Right. And we should probably have that. We first we told him they can't. Wait a minute. Where's? Mm. Oh, that's that's right. That's what I would say. The commission shall only consider complete applications. And we can put that in the bylaws, and then we can work with staff on saying what does a what constitutes a complete application. So when the guy says, "What do I need to do?" It better all be there for a completeness. And Pat had written a whole bunch of stuff out, so we just matter of taking that and put it in a format that we can say this is the planning commission's definition of a complete application. Yeah, and I didn't. I didn't think to grab the the sheet from the last meeting because I had yeah. a bunch of notes written in it. But most of what he had written was already covered in this, except mm -hmm. for one or two items. And I don't know if that's what these well, yellow he was, ones he were. He was getting very specific. On, yeah, um, it was actually you know just map scale and stuff like that. That that's to me is is a detail that, that goes with staff. Right. The fact that it better be a complete application. Then it's us to up to us to say what is a complete application. It's this. Right. And staff's going to work with that. Okay. And we'll work with staff so that we're not going to give them something that they can't work with. So that should cover it. Sound good? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. We got course of action here. Direction. Okay. Continue to the next meeting to allow staff to. And we've got an action item where yeah. you can vote on it and I can drop that in the final yeah. line. Okay. And adopted or presented to city council. Well, I think we got to adapt. We just adopt it for our use. Here, right. Yeah. Unless somebody objects. Okay. I'll look to see um, at the time of the last one if I can find a resolution that it, it'd have to go back to. Mm -hmm. Because it, bottom line, if we send it up, we're just saying, hey, guys, here's how, here's how we're operating. Right. In case somebody complains to you, this is how we do business here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good point. Unless the council overrides us. I think in the case when they established the Youth, youth Commission, that they did present the council, and I think about it with the bylaws, and they reviewed them and said, give their blessing. Because, um, see, this isn't new. This this is just maintenance, yeah, practical purposes. some of the things had changed over the first few years, and they haven't been integrated. And then where will this document reside? 
Everybody gets a well, copy. Well, our county commissioners should get a copy of it when they come on board. Yeah. But uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a binder with yeah. policies and procedures. Okay. And yeah. We can make it a resolution and it will always be, you know. And would it be online? Would it? Uh, can be sure. if you want it. Sure, under the planning commission, I think that's a good place to yeah. do it as well. Definitely. Forms and yeah. whatever. Or, yeah, description or bylaws. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I say let's do it by resolution so that that way we have it as part of the official actions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if the public next week has better ideas for us, we'll, we'll take that too. But I'm glad we're looking it over because it, it's just an operating how do you do business. Okay, well, that's, let that one go. What's next? Okay, all three. Comments and reports. Planning commissioners. Any commissioner wants to speak? Yeah, I'd like to remind the public <laughs> that we have two meetings coming up. To one meeting tomorrow night and another meeting on Thursday night. Works, and the public up. is invited. Absolutely. And urged to attend. Mm -hmm. And urged to attend. Thank you. I would like to add that on Saturday, February 13th, the Historical Society will have an open house at the Native Daughters Adobe from 1 to 4. Everybody's welcome. If you have never been in the building, you should come and see. Um, Is the date again? February 13th. Two thirteen. I'd also like to tell the viewing audience that um, as chair of the Historic Resources Board, I've, I've come to learn that the sign on the fire department is no longer there, um, but it is not gone. It's in it's in storage on the property, pending um, addition of proper wordage to designate that it's also a volunteer fire department going back to a certain period of time, which I have to look up. So that's that's pending, and apparently items that have been removed have been returned, memorabilia. And the um, California Mission Studies Convention will be in San Juan February 12th, 13th, and 14th. So if you see a lot of people wandering around, be nice, and film around town. About 150 of them. Mm -hmm. A study. Mm -hmm. Three days. Mm -hmm. They'll have tours, lectures, a big dinner. So show them how nice we are. That's and tell them we need some help with the mission. Mm -hmm. Do you need some uh, pledge cards or anything? Hey, I'm going to do that. Okay. You got a bunch. I think I do. Mr. Gretasau, any comments? I have nothing. Who would like to comment on that meeting Sorry. we attended the other day, the branding meeting? Hmm? Why don't you? The uh, San Juan Committee, and <clears throat> correct me and help me along this mm -hmm. thing. The San Juan Committee uh, sponsored a meeting the other night about branding, branding <clears throat> for the city of San Juan. Um, and they told us all about what branding was, what it was not, how, like for instance, you don't see the word McDonald's anymore. You see two golden arches. And what happens when you see them? Something in the back of your brain says hamburgers. And we'd like to get the city of San Juan so developed so that when they see our emblem or whatnot, something in the back of their house, or when they hear the word San Juan Bautista, something in the back of the brain says, hey, we want to go there because. Now, it has to be there when you get there. And it's going to take a complete, everybody's going to have to be involved with this thing because you have to, one, find out what are your strong points? What do you want to use to sell San Juan Bautista? Are there underlying things that have never been developed? never been exploited or pulled out that could be brought out. At one time, somebody says, hey, how about a Fiesta Rodeo? And there was a Fiesta Rodeo, and that brought thousands of people in there. It brought the Professional Cowboy Association so that the guys who came to San Juan Bautista went to Salinas the next weekend, and you got world-class cowboys here. And then you had the big festivals, and those, I mean, people, People were up as far as 7th Street parking on the side streets because there's so many people there. So that San Juan had something. Now we have an era where we want, again, to say, what is San Juan? And there's a questionnaire in the middle of the Mission Village Voice, 
and ask a bunch of embarrassing questions there, you know? Uh, what have you heard people say about it? What do you think about certain things? What's first in your mind? You know, is it the mission? Is it the historical? Is it the restaurants? Whatever. And they're trying to put all this stuff together, the back mindset, talk about like going to general plan, uh, pull all this stuff together so they can say, where is our strong points? So we want that to be registered in the back of somebody's brain so when we say San Juan Bautista, they know exactly what they want to do. And so, uh, as chairman of the commission, I would urge you to fill out that form and get it back to the San Juan committee. You can do it online. You can send it in. What else? If you don't Mail have in. a copy of the paper, I don't know why you wouldn't, but you can go to Facebook and look at the, what's going on That's in San Juan or go to the Historical Society. I think we have a link to that, too. So we really want everybody's input. Everybody counts. Everybody matters. Remember, we, we, got a, we got a direction for the next 20 years for our growth of the city. But we want people to understand what the city is. I mean, the first thing is maybe you feel the missions the first on your mind. Maybe you feel the historical park, whatever. But you start pulling enough of that stuff together, and these folks can decide <clears throat> where we can focus, what we need to do to get there. But we need to have a brand for San Juan Bautista that everybody understands when they hear the word. Um, okay. On that subject, uh, we got until the 15th of February for the survey. Oh, okay. And I also was reminded by, I attended the meeting, and I was also reminded by a longtime resident that we are the city of history. We are the city of history. That's another, that's another factor. So it's... Uh, and the mission is the mission of music. Yeah. And it's interesting because I'm looking at the logo of San Juan Batista, and it says Mission San Juan Batista established... 1797, so, um, you know, and, and, and we're asking people to think outside of the envelope or outside of the box. So it's interesting. I think, uh, I think the survey will, will point to a lot of things that we need to discuss. And I think we do need a brand and what that will entail. Uh, I've, I've heard some beautiful ones. I, I can't repeat them right now, but, uh, but we'll see what happens. Okay, is there anything else we want to we want to push on here? The meeting's coming up. I'll think about it an hour after we leave. There you got it. Same here. <laughs> okay, if there's no other oh staff? Comments, Rudy? Uh, just another there. I know Rudy and I were uh, scurrying around and pushing there and then oh, I'm sorry, if you I know uh, a couple of the commissioners wanted to, us to uh, uh, bring you back some reports on the brewery and Harvey Locks, and we'll get that at the next meeting. We were just really jammed this this month here. And, and the I think Arco? from the standpoint in the Arco, and uh, just from the standpoint of uh, the brewery, we got the lot line adjustment recorded. We got the package back today, and it'll be sent out to the owners. And now I think with we're going to have a meeting with Mr. Serta and see if he can uh, get the necessary finance to get that thing done. And you know, so they're, they're, so we're going to be pushing hard for him to uh, yeah, either. And and also, I've alerted uh, three or four uh, real estate agents, uh, and they've been searching around people that are interested in buying it. So we want to make that available to Mr. Serta so that he has at least a couple options. Yeah. He's going through some tough time with the family, and so there, you know. And uh, with that, I think uh, the uh, the. Uh, San Juan uh, Volunteer Fire Department. That I was really upset, and I, when I discovered when I came in one morning, I thought somebody stole it, and so I called the sheriff's department and reported it. You know, stole it. It's not on the wall. Oh, firefighters in handcuffs later. That's why communication is really important. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, uh, you know, I'd like to make one other comment. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think we, we need the help of a lot of residents out here. You know, we're short some restaurants. If you know of a restaurant that you like, and you think it would look good in San Juan Bautista, 
The thing would do would be to contact the city hall staff or one of the commissioners and let us know why you like it. And we'll go down and try and find out who owns this thing, whether they build restaurants, buy restaurants, or whatever. I tried uh, myself one to get a steakhouse in here, but it was a chain, and we do not allow chains in this town. My next approach was to say, hey, call it something else, but have your brand in it. Uh, but the thing, and, and it, it failed. But the, the key thing is that you need to let us know where some good restaurants that you've seen any place, and they might want to come to California if they're not here already. But the bottom line is, unless we have some good names, we can't go chasing them. So staff is always open to new ideas. Commission's open to new ideas. Just get us some names that we can go pursuing and, and twist some arms and say, hey, you really need to come in here. And the brewery would have been a great place to have a steakhouse. And we got the Cutting Horse building. That's a great steakhouse. It has been for years. I'd like to see that get opened again. But get involved with your city and help us make it great, greater. Thank you. And the ARCO uh, is being uh, briefing uh, in front of the uh, the judge uh, the eighth Monday morning, uh, Monday afternoon. Oh, and God. Judge Sanders will be hearing it, and the arguments will be presented. So, and just to give you background, uh, the, uh, the uh, it was uh, attacked on the CEQA procedures, not the project itself. Oh. Mm. Details. Mm. It's always the details. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Anybody else? No other comments? Strategic thank you, plan. Move for uh, entertain a motion for strategic plan. Hmm? Strategic plan. Oh, hey, strategic plan before. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I kept asking you. Okay. Uh, uh, well, oh, is that, is that what you looked at me for? I'm sorry. No, but I mean, that would be uh, okay. a good time. So I, I actually did miss last month's meeting, but we were asked um, by. Um, City Council to investigate um, alternative um, law, enforcement. law enforcement options. And uh, we held a meeting last Friday uh, here. Uh, the uh, Government and Communications Subcommittee met here, and we uh, split ourselves into three different segments on what to research um, camera systems, security, and can the sheriff up their stuff? The reason why I'm in this is I met with the sheriff and talked to him a little bit today to get some ideas. And At least they're not stripes. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so um, we're getting all that information, coming back together next Monday as a subcommittee, and then meeting on Tuesday as a whole to discuss those. The uh, in talking uh, in what they said at the last. Uh, City Council meeting and in talking with uh, uh, City Council uh, persons, they're just looking for a recommendation on what to do to increase law enforcement in whatever fashion that may be. Are you still having general meetings or just subcommittee meetings? General meetings. General meetings once a month, second Tuesday of each month, and then subcommittees as they need be. This is another community wide program. It's not just Putting a cop on every street is every citizen has to be involved somehow, I'm some way. I'm meeting with a, a security uh, camera company. Mm. Yep. Yeah, there was a, I always felt that uh, crime prevention and planning went hand in hand or can go hand in hand for many items. And it's the security of your buildings and your neighborhoods. So I'll meet with you and I have some ideas we can talk about. Cool. Okay, Chair entertains a motion for adjournment. I move. I second. Anybody objecting to it? Nope. Who wants to sit here till midnight? So, uh